Well, it's a warm spring, sunny day in Southern California. This is the Los Angeles Coliseum, where in just 69 days, athletes will be competing in the 1984 Summer Olympics. But today, it's football to be played here, as the Los Angeles Express hosts the defending champion Michigan Panthers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt. Every game is a must-win, but these two clubs today find themselves in a do-or-die situation. Now, that may be stretching it to a point, but the Michigan Panthers have lost five of their last six ball games. They are in a definite tailspin, and unless they turn it around rather quickly, they'll be watching the playoffs this year from home in the Motor City. Now, on the other hand, the Los Angeles Express have caught fire. They have won two of their last three ball games, and they got a lot of help last night from the Arizona Wranglers. Arizona defeated the first-place Denver Gold 41-6, to a big night for for Craig Landry. The LA Express now right smack in the thick of the standings as you look there. A win today will tie them with Arizona. They play the Wranglers two more times and Denver, as we mentioned, is fading fast. Now over in the Central Division, Michigan, despite its five losses, is still in first place, but you can see this game is critical with Houston and Oklahoma playing this afternoon and we will keep you updated on that game throughout the day. Working with me again today here in Los Angeles is Lee Gross Cup. And Cupper, we've seen this Michigan team play four times. This will be the fifth time this year. What is the problem? Tim, I think the obvious problem is the loss of Anthony Carter. They've, they've lost five of their last six games with AC out of there. But it's more than that. Let's detail some of them as we look at action from last week. Derek Holloway has been effective as a receiver. But with AC out of there, he's drawn some double coverage. And that's limited him as a deep threat. So AC, as we've said before, is also a catalyst. Now, sacks have also have been a problem for Bobby Bear. He's gone down 27 times four of those last week. Drop passes. Another item. John Williams appears to have this pass, but he simply drops it, and he's wide open. Turnovers. Another big factor. Bear completes this ball to his wide receiver, Mike Williams, but he just coughs it up. Those are drive killers. And, of course, interceptions. Bobby has been picked off 16 times this year. That's just one shy of his 17 total for all of the 1983 season. You know, I visited the Panthers this week out in Michigan. We'll talk more in depth about those problems a little bit later. But first, what about the defense? Defensively good at times, bad at times. The main thing, Tim, is that they have not had the continuity between offense and defense. All right, let's go to the other side of the field, the LA Express, a club I know you like. I like their defense, particularly the work of the massive and physical front four led by Georgia. Chica and Eddie Meat Cleaver Weaver. They limited Kelvin Bryant last week to a mere 60 yards. They really did a good job of bottling up Kelvin with plays like this. As I said, they're very big, very physical, very aggressive. They've also liked the work of their secondary and have gotten a real lift from the big play work of their safety and nickelback, Troy West, who you see right here. This interception of a Chuck Fusina pass led to a touchdown by Mel Gray. Gray takes the blast play off the left side here. This was part of a 122-yard effort, which was the best single-game rushing effort in the club's history. Of course, the big difference uh, since the last time, well, let's uh, talk about this. Mistakes have hurt the team, too. A penalty uh, nullified the first good kick. This second kick by Tony Zendejo goes off the upright. This would have given the lead to the Express at halftime. And, of course, the big difference uh, with the club is the work of uh, quarterback Steve Young, the talented youngster out of uh, BYU. Gets, uh, throws off a blitzing linebacker and scurries into the end zone. However, he is a rookie, and mistakes will hurt you when you're a rookie. This one was costly. He misread his receiver, threw the ball right to Garcia Lane, and this turned out to be the most important play of the football game. We'll sit down and we'll talk with Steve Young a little bit later. It's Michigan and Los Angeles coming up. Jim Lampley with a full USFL report right after these messages. Okay, in addition to the three games that we'll be televising today, there is one other game being played in the league. That one matches San Antonio 4-8 and eight against the Washington Federals 2-10. and 10. News from the USFL, and it emanates at least indirectly from that Federals franchise. The Miami Herald reported this morning that real estate developer Sherwood Weiser, the new owner of that franchise, has offered University of Miami coach Howard Schnellenberger a contract which would pay him $3 million over the next five years and also guarantee him a six-figure income for life. He's presently in the third year of a five-year deal with the University of Miami, which pays him $250,000 a year and allows for a bundle of outside income. University officials have indicated that they will not negotiate to try to keep Schnellenberger on as football coach. There is peril here. This is
is the tenth job with which Schnellenberger's name has been linked in the past year. But expect an announcement within a week, and if our sources are correct, expect Schnellenberger to accept the job with Weiser's organization. Last night in the USFL, there were 33,194 at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia as the Philadelphia Stars, the league's hottest team, had Penn State night to honor the Penn State players on their team. They won for the tenth consecutive time to set a league mark, and here's how it looked. The Penn State Stars, well in evidence early, first quarter, if you've seen it, to Scott Fitzke, that one from 13 yards out on the first possession, and business like Philadelphia was up seven to nothing. Later in the first quarter, David Riley, who's performed so well in recent weeks, went in from four yards out, 14 nothing. Riley was later to injure a shoulder and missed the second half of the ball game. It was 31-6 at the half. In the third quarter, Philly's main man, Kelvin Bryant, went in from two yards out to make it 38-6. Bryant ended the night with 121 yards rushing and receiving. Finally, Fusina hit Steve Folsom from 37 yards out to make it 45-6. Fusina, 23 of 30, 302 yards and three TDs. Also last night, Arizona beat Denver 41-6. First win ever for the Wranglers over the gold. Fifth loss in a row for the gold, and it moves Arizona to within one game in the Pacific Division. That before 21,741 in Tempe. Also last night, 22,030 at Oakland Alameda Coliseum as Oakland won for the fourth consecutive time after the nine losses with which they started the season. This one, a 29-14 win over the Memphis Showboats. In the first quarter, Tom Newton scored from one yard out, and that made it 7 nothing favor of the Invaders. Oakland stretched the lead to 10 nothing in the second quarter. <clears throat> before Walter Lewis ran in from 38 yards out to make it 10 to 7. Later, Lewis would tear ligaments in his right or throwing hand, and he missed most of the second half for the Memphis Showboats. No telling when he'll be back in action. Before the half, Fred Bassana, of all people, ran in from one yard out. That made it 16-7 Oakland at halftime, and the Invaders were able to go on and win the ball game despite giving up this touchdown return to the league's leading kickoff returner, Derek Crawford of the Boats, 97 yards on the opening kickoff of the second half. That made it 16-14. But Oakland, despite having lost their star runner, the hottest runner in the league in recent weeks, Eric Jordan, with an ankle injury, scored again. Bassana to Newton, two yards out in the fourth quarter. That made it 23-14. They went on to a 29-14 win. Marcus Quinn picked off four passes from Ken Johnson, the backup boats quarterback, in the fourth quarter. That gives Quinn 11 for the season and gives him the league lead in that category. Also, Friday, Birmingham beat Chicago 41 to 7 before 8,578 in Soldiers Field. Birmingham still without Joe Cribbs, but they rushed for 216 yards in that game. And incidentally, it's still unclear how the blitz figures in the purchase of a Chicago franchise by White Sox owners Jerry Reinsdorf and Eddie Einhorn, who have indicated it is not necessarily the blitz as presently constituted that they have purchased. Monday night, the Pittsburgh Maulers will be completing the USFL's action for the weekend against the New Jersey Generals in the Meadowlands, and Pittsburgh is up against it. Apparently, both Rozier and Glenn Carano will miss that game with injuries. Down in the Astrodome, Oklahoma against Houston, Jim Kelly is well on his way to having the best year that any rookie quarterback in professional football has ever had. The numbers are awesome, and we're going to see his 29th touchdown pass of the season right here in a moment as in the first quarter on Houston's first possession, Kelly has hit Richard Johnson with a 41-yard touchdown pass, which has given the gamblers a 7-0 lead. Here's a look as Kelly rolls to his left. Watch for number 22 to come into the picture downfield. With this catch, Richard Johnson has numbered 82 on the season, breaking Tremaine Johnson's league record of 81 established a year ago. And also, Johnson went over 1,000 yards for the season. He has an uncanny knack of getting open downfield whenever Kelly scrambles out of the pocket in the run and shoot offense of offensive coordinator Mouse Davis and the Houston Gamblers. Meanwhile, New Orleans at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, a class act under Steve Spurrier. They always provide something unexpected today. It was an opening drive in which the Bandits went without a huddle for much of the time. It produced a six-play, 72-yard touchdown drive, and here was the payoff. Reeves to Eric Trevilian from three yards out. That has made it 7-0 Tampa Bay in the first quarter. Remember, of course, that the Bandits have won six in a row to get back into second place ahead of New Orleans in the Southern Division. Last night in the Pacific Division, the Arizona Wranglers defeated 
defeated the Denver Gold 41 to 6 before 21,741 at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. For the Denver Gold, the fifth loss in a row, and that loss by Denver has given a chance to both Arizona as well as the LA Express to continue to contend for a playoff berth for the division championship as we go on in the season. Now back to Tim Brandt and the LA Coliseum. Thank you, Jim Lapley. You're looking at the records of the two teams. The Michigan Panthers, the Los Angeles Express, they're down on the field right now for the flip of the coin to see who will kick off and who will receive. Well, the Michigan Panthers have won the toss. They will receive. They will defend the gold on the left as you look at your monitors. Gorgeous day for football here in Los Angeles. The weather. Clear skies, light breeze, normal light haze for Los Angeles, and the temperature 79 degrees. A marvelous day for football. And Lee Gross Cup, beach weather, anything else you want to do today? Well, you know, I grew up in nearby Santa Monica here, Tim, so this is a, a homecoming of sorts for me. And, and I realize that uh, it's, a, it's a tough place to sell football in the springtime because of the fact that there are so many distractions here in Southern California. Big, big football game for these two clubs. We've gone into that in some depth, and we told you that both of these clubs need the win today. It is almost like a spring game out here since it is a, a very light crowd, almost like on a college campus. Very few people have turned out to watch it. And yet you can feel the electricity down on the field. You can see the clubs warming up, and they know they have to play with some intensity today, and they have to be very strong. That's Tony Zendejas, number 11 for Los Angeles, who will kick it off. And the two deep men, number 20, Bobby Futrell on the left, and Albert Bentley, number 32 on the right. Albert Bentley has just joined this club recently. He is from the University of Miami. Played in the championship game in the Orange Bowl in that big win over Nebraska. He was the offensive most valuable player on the national championship team. Played with a couple of pretty good quarterbacks there at Miami too. A fellow by the name of Jim Kelly first and then Bernie Kozar. And he's kind of a slashing type runner and they'd like to see him get into action more. Zendejas strong leg. The ball is teed up at the 35-yard line, and he will kick it away. A low-lining kick. It's taken by Bentley to the 20. As a hole across the 30, 35. Not got of bounds on the 45. Well down by Troy West, number 47. But a big return for Albert Bentley and a fine block by Bobby Futrell. So we'll set that Michigan offensive lineup for you. And the offensive talent, of course, has to start with the quarterback, that being Bobby Hebert. Ken Lacey and John Williams, you know the story on them, and we'll amplify on that a little bit later. John Williams, two big ball games. Derek Holloway, Walter Broughton, they're wideouts. And the offensive line today, a little makeshift. Mike Cobb is the tight end. Ray Penny has moved over to tackle. He has been playing guard. Jeff Wiska moves in there. The center is Wayne Radloff, Tyrone McGriffin, Chris Godfrey. So the Panthers on the 45-yard line have the first play of the ball game. We saw them last week in New Orleans lose to the Breakers 10-3. They are trying to rebound from that, and they have lost, as we mentioned, five out of the last six. This is the handoff to Williams, who spins, turns, drives, bounces outside, picks up three yards before he's taken down there. Now they'll mark it, and they'll only give him two. The defensive lineup for the LA Express, Fletcher Jenkins, longtime NFL player, George Achika, Charles Ussery, and Eddie we Weaver will start at defensive end. The linebackers, Danny Rich, Howard Carson, who played with the Rams, David Howard, and the defensive secondary will have Wyman Henderson, Dwight Drain, Aaron Mitchell, and Tyrone Justin. It is second down and eight. A bear to throw. And it's complete. That's Walter Broughton, number 24, who had to go down low and make the catch. Now, last week when we saw Bobby Bear, number 11, he was coming off a knee injury. He was about 80%, still played well, did not have his mobility, and was sacked. He also threw an interception. There are the numbers on him. He is still hitting 57.6% of his passes. He has 18 touchdowns, but also, as Lee Grosskopf mentioned in the pregame, has 16 interceptions. He has been struggling. When I talked to him in Michigan this week, he said he's nearly 100%, and he's looking forward to turning things around for the Panthers. Third down and seven. And again, a bear to throw. Sends everybody out. Walter Broughton has the first down up to the 39-yard line. And they were working on number 20, Tyrone Justin. 
Big third down play as Bobby Hebert finds Walter Broughton out of Jacksonville State. He's working on Tyrone Justin, the cornerback number 20, and he's got a curl-in route here at about 12 yards. The ball's thrown high. Leaping catch there. Coverage not too successful. I would say, Tim, that you would have to classify the express cornerbacks as just about average. The safeties are a little stronger. This Los Angeles team is extremely young. 42 of the 50 players on the roster, second year, or rookies. Body A there, withdrawn first down. Again, he goes to the left corner, this time incomplete. It was intended for Derek Holloway, who juggled the ball as he went out of bounds. And Tyrone Justin, number 20, that time good coverage, rode him out of bounds and stripped him of the football. Derek Holloway, number 29, out of the University of Arkansas, is running a deep sideline cut here, makes a little move, hesitation, breaks it to the outside. Tyrone Justin, number 20, as Tim told you, has more successful coverage this time, a little bit of a cushion, comes up, hits him hard, strips the ball away from him right at the sideline. Good defensive effort. By the Bear, the USFL player of the year last year, plays again, and again he's complete to Derek Holloway, who has some running room. 25 down to the 21-yard line. Tyrone Justin trailed him all the way across the field, was beaten on the play, but came from behind to make the tackle. So Bobby Hebert is impressive early. The Cajun Cannon, who we've seen uh, successful many times before, this is a vintage drive for him. He is very successful throwing these underneath cuts. Derek Holloway lets the, the coverage clear out, comes underneath. Tyrone Justin is chasing him. Finally grabs him by the ankle right there along, gets some help from number 34, Aaron Mitchell, who has been the most successful tackler in their secondary. First down, Panthers. John Williams and Lacey are the setbacks. Broughton and Holloway the wide ups. This is John Williams as a whole, left side, quick opener. Down to the 15-yard line before Aaron Mitchell trips him up. John Williams out of Wisconsin, who you see right there, those are his numbers. He's been the most successful running back for them in recent weeks, and I think he's going to be the key today, particularly on the outside running game, which sets up their inside running game. That's a misdirection trap play right there. Gets a good block from number 72, Jeff Wiska, out of Michigan State, and sets it up for Williams to cut off the left side tackle made by Aaron Mitchell. Second down, Panthers. Man defense. This is Williams. Bangs up close to another first down. John Williams is the Panthers' leading ball carrier. And as Lee Grosscup mentioned, Howard Carson was the man in on the tackle at his middle linebacker position. And he's really been the leader of their defensive unit. He's the guy who really takes charge there for him, the leading tackler, but he's the one with the experience. As we look at John Hadle, an incredible NFL career he had after being an All-American at the University of Kansas. I played against him in 1962 in the Old American Football League. Mike Cobb and his record and his streak still intact. He now has 33 catches, 33 straight ball games. He is the only Michigan Panther to make a catch in every single game in the club's existence. Mike Cobb, game number 33 at his tight end position, takes an outside release, now comes back across the middle, lets it clear out. That's been an effective cut for him. He's a former first-round draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals after a great career at Michigan State. This is an impressive drive by the Michigan Panthers. The first drive of the ball game was to have 10-22 remaining in the first quarter. L.A. shows blitz. Lacey beats the blitz, picks a hole on the right side, and he barrels down to the three. And Lacey struggled with himself mentally, booed by the fans for jumping leagues, signed with Kansas City of the National Football League. We told you that. He's still averaging nearly five yards per carry. Last year, he ran for over 100 yards in both the Express games. Carson, the linebacker, 
came across, penetrated, and made the stop. As we look at the misdirection action here, we see Ken Lacey going first, and then the underneath ball handling to John Williams, and Howard Carson at his middle linebacker position plays it perfectly. He anticipates, comes through the hole, shuts the play down. Howard Carson play with the Rams, third and goal from the four. Broughton in motion, Aber to throw, looks the situation over, throws, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by David Howard, number 58. He read the play, dropped to his hook zone, took the corner and intercepted the pass at his highest point. Big play for the defense they call the rubber band defense. He can stretch it, but don't break it. And the LA Express now have new life. David Howard back in action now after being coming off the injured list. He's number 58, the outside linebacker. Bear is trying to go to John Williams coming out of the backfield, and there's the leaping catch by number 58, David Howard out of Cal State Long Beach. He served notice early on in the season when he had 10 tackles in the first ball game of the year against the Denver goal. Another look, and you can see the great effort right there as David Howard makes a leaping interception. He's a late add to the starting roster. He replaces Kevin Turner. This is Mel Gray, his first carry of the afternoon. Mel Gray, left side, an exciting runner. Looks like he'll gain two, and all of a sudden he'll break it for 30. The quarterback is Steve Young. The running back's Mel Gray. What they call the H-back, a motion man, and tight end is David Hersey. The wide receiver is Freddie Scott, longtime NFL veteran. JoJo Townsell, the team's leading receiver. The offensive line, the tight end is Darren Long. He's replacing Mike Schrott, who's injured. Then comes Hart, Durrett, Ruther, Jones, and Zimmerman. Young, but talented. Offensive line. Young in trouble, and he goes down in the grasp of the blitzing linebacker, number 52, Kyle Borland. The crowd doesn't like the call, and I don't know if I do either, Lee Gross Cup. It is that safety call by the official. When a quarterback is in the grasp of a defensive player, they're going to blow the whistle. But this is the kind of quarterback that really does not benefit by that rule. No, he does not benefit, but in the long run, it's going to benefit more quarterbacks. And most of the rule changes that have occurred in both college and professional football over the last 100 years or more have been for the purpose of safety. Well, they move him back and say it's third and 13. Looks even longer than that. Steve Young is backed against his own goal line and hands off to Mel Gray on the draw from the shotgun, and he goes down quickly. I would certainly question that call. Why hand the ball off that deep? If you're going to hand the ball off, hand it off from the T formation, not from the shotgun. Why that call? Don't know. Well, we'll get our first punt of the afternoon. And at least the Los Angeles Express will have a chance to kick it out of the danger area. That's Steve Young. The punter is Jeff Partridge, number 16. And you can see that he is all the way in the back of the end zone against the back line. He averages 38 yards a punt. He's out of Washington. It's off a pretty good punt that goes out of bounds on the 37-yard line. And Partridge is down. There's a flag. It's going to be roughing the kicker by Vito McKeever, number 36, who came in late and nailed Partridge. Jeff Partridge trying to get the ball away right here, and there is Vito McKeever, number 36, coming in from the defensive left side, the offensive right, and it appears that he really hammered Partridge's leg. And I don't think Partridge is acting there, Tim. Well, you can't tell if he was blocked into the punter or not, but one thing is certain. Partridge is down, he's still down, and he's hurt. So, with timeout on the field, we'll take one as well. With our score, Michigan nothing, Los Angeles nothing. Roughing the kicker. Seven minutes, five seconds remaining in the first quarter. Light crowd, beautiful weather, scoreless ball game. When we left you, Jeff Partridge had gone down. He was injured. Roughing the passer. It has given Los Angeles a first down up at the 17-yard line. So Steve Young and the offensive unit are back on the field. Lone defense by the Panthers. Young scrambles left, throws, and it's... Is it complete or is it not? Yes, it's ruled completion to JoJo Townsend. He has not played that much, and I doubt if he's in the rhythm of the offense. This 
is a pass, and it's complete to Freddie Scott, number 87. Another first down for Los Angeles, and right now let's go down to our colleague on the field, Martin Wyatt. Well, first of all, about Mel Gray. He's just got the wind knocked out of him, so he'll be back in probably in a couple of plays. Jeff Partridge, the punter, uh, just said with a slight ankle sprain, which is good news for the Express. Back up to you, man. Okay, Martin, thank you very much. Steve Young off to a hot start. Three for three now for 42 yards. Two of those on scrambles. L.A. from the 29. Gives it right side. That's Kevin Mack. His first carry with the Los Angeles Express today. Prior to this, he had one carry with the entire season for three yards. You mentioned Kevin Nelson out with a rib injury. Mel Gray just left the field. So now we're looking at a third-string tailback or fullback in Kevin Mack. And you're right. He may not have the continuity of the offense yet. I saw Kevin Mack play in college. He went to Clemson, and he was the ACC back of the week against the University of Maryland. Your alma mater. Bet you hated that. Three minutes, 43 seconds remaining. First quarter. Young to throw on second down and 10. Overthrows Tony Bodie. Tony Bode may have had a step on Ron Osborne. Right now, let's go back to New York. Jim Lapley has this United States Football League report. You saw the 29th touchdown pass of the season for Jim Kelly. Take a look now at the 30th. This one will go to running back Todd Fowler. Fowler doing most of the work after Kelly was able to dump it off against the Blitz. 36-yard touchdown, 14-0 favor of Houston. And they continue to play well in the Astrodome. Now back to Tim Brandt. Thanks, Jim Lampley. We've got a big football team here, big play team, and Los Angeles made the interception. Now they're driving after a penalty gave him new life for Steve Young in a little bit of trouble. This is third down and ten. Finds the receiver, throws deep again. It's Tony Bodie. The crowd was passing. Tom Moriarty, number 45. And Tom Moriarty's playing dangerously. He's riding the backs of receivers. He's a, he's a physical player out of the uh, Middle America Conference, and he's filling in for another physical player, David Greenwood, of course, the best athlete in the secondary. Steve Young, straight drop back here. This is what he does so often. Looks, escape dimension to the left, throws deep to Tony Bodie, the H-back, number 24. It appears that there might have been pass interference, but I think it was just his balance. Tony Zendejas from 46 yards. His kick, his throw. And the Los Angeles Express go on the board first. Tony Zendejas. So, with three minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter, L.A. strikes first. So, Tony Zendejas out of Nevada, Reno, comes on and kicks the field goal, and Los Angeles now leads 3 to nothing. The Michigan Panthers still struggling, still turning the ball over. It was a Bobby Hebert interception, and then a roughing the kicker penalty that led to that drive by the Express. And that's Tony's longest field goal of the year. Kicked a 60-yarder in college. This is Albert Bentley. Albert Bentley in trouble. Looks for a hole. Picks up a block. Goes across the 15 to the 17-yard line. But outstanding coverage by the special teams of the young Los Angeles Ball Club. I think all the players concurred that, yes, in fact, they were moving the football. They just killed themselves with penalties and, penalties and mistakes. And they can't get on the board. Bear, first and 10. Gives the ball to John Williams. Good penetration by the defense, and Williams gets back to the line of scrimmage. Dwight Drain, number 33, makes the stop, but there was penetration up front by Charles Ussery and Georgia Chica. I think that's an important play right there for the Express, Tim, because you talked to some of the Michigan coaches. I talked to them, too. They said they wanted to establish their outside running game. John Williams is trying to get to the outside, but Howard Carson, number 54, shuts the play down by filling from his linebacker position. Also coming up from his safety position is number 33, Dwight Drain. They give him a yard. It'll be second and nine for Bobby Hebert. He's got Broughton and Holloway spread wide. He's going to throw. Looks in the direction of Broughton. Has him open. Broughton across midfield. Steps out of bounds on the 49. So bring it back. But a big gainer for the Michigan Panthers into L.A. territory. It was Dwight Drain who Broughton had beaten. Walter Broughton can move. He's got good speed, 4-5 in the 40. He was a running back in college. 
Bobby Abair, after play action fake, looks wide to Walter Broughton, his wide receiver, who's in a foot race right here along the sidelines with number 33, Dwight Drain. This ball is thrown with a perfect looping trajectory over the head of Drain and settles right into the hands of Walter Broughton, who, as you mentioned, was a running back and a good one at Jacksonville State. Bobby Abair now 5 of 7 for 70 yards. First down, Michigan. Hebert, Cobb, almost intercepted again. In and out of the hands of Wyman Henderson, the defensive back. Cobb makes a big target. That time he was overthrown. He's 6'5", 265-pound tight end out of Michigan State. And he's running right here with Wyman Henderson. And as you see right there, Henderson nearly has an interception. Henderson was one of the guys who was a starter last year for the Express. Second and ten from the 48. L.A. shows zone. Now drops back across the middle goes Mike Cobb. Cobb is down to the 39-yard line underneath the linebackers. Right now, let's go back to Jim Lampley in New York with this report on the USFL. Jim Lampley again in New York. New Orleans has tied Tampa Bay, and here's the play that set the touchdown up. John Walton will look down the left sideline to Frank the Animal Lockett, turned the defensive back around, got the feet inbounds just before the goal line. Dupree took it in, and it's 7-7 seven seven in Tampa Bay. Back to Tim Brandt. We saw New Orleans struggle a little bit last week, but they did beat Michigan, and now it looks like they're coming back to life just in time. They play in Tampa Bay today, and next week they play Birmingham, both of the clubs that are sitting in front of them in the Southern Division. Here at the Coliseum with one minute left to give. And it looks like Ken Lacey got enough for the first down. He needed one. He picked up two following the blocking of Jeff Wiska and Ray Penny. Ken Lacey, the best power runner that the Panthers have, goes right over his center there. He really had a great career at Tulsa. I covered him in 1981, a game against Drake. It was like a track meet. 6'1", 220. Tough athlete, too. Yeah. You know, I mentioned to you before that he was recruited at Oklahoma and Texas as a linebacker. I'd forgotten that. It's a good point. And, of course, Ken Lacey finished third in the league last year and rushing behind Herschel Walker and Kelvin Bryant. 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. First down, Michigan. Michael Broughton in motion. Bear under pressure, throws off his back foot, almost intercepted. Wyman Henderson read the play. Derek Holloway curled, and when the ball came in low, Henderson went after it, almost picked it off. Derek Holloway in isolation here along the right sideline. He's trying to run a deep curl-in route. Number 22, Wyman Henderson is in perfect position. That ball was not thrown with the usual A-Bear zip. He's known as the Cajun Cannon, but sometimes he doesn't finish. He doesn't come over from his right foot to his left. He's now 6 of 10, 79 yards, and faced with a long second down play. Second and 10 from the 37. No choice but the throw. Drops it across the middle. This is Derek Holloway. Needs a block. Throws a move. Gets out of bounds in the 21-yard line. First down, Michigan. And a big play for Holloway. Because of his blinding speed, Derek Holloway is often very successful under the underneath pass cuts, as you see right here. He lets the coverage clear out. Comes underneath. And he gets a good block. And then runs eventually out of bounds. Troy West is the man who forces him out. You see that? He's coming slow right here. He lets it clear out for him, catches the ball right here, and now skirts to the other sidelines. And finally, he gets, well, he gets a block from Ken Lacey along the way. It's Troy West who finally runs him out. One of the toughest patterns for a defensive player to cover when they drag him all the way across the field. He comes under you, not expecting to see him. First down. This will be the pass to the sidelines to Holloway, but he was out of bounds. Well, signs of life from the Michigan Panthers. After we painted such a bleak picture, yeah. they look good. But you made a good point in that they've been moving the ball right along, but mistakes have, have killed them. You see right there, this is a two-foot lead. Wyman Henderson is the man there on the coverage. Which means? Which means that you have to have two feet inbounds for it to be a completion. 
where in college football, you have one foot just touch inbounds and it's a completion. John Hayden, quite a score. Former All-Pro quarterback, 16-year veteran of professional football. I guess most noted, noted for his years with the Chargers. Second, 10, throws off his back foot to Cobb, and Cobb is up close to a first down. Aaron Mitchell makes him pay the price for catching the football. The man he played for, of course, with the Chargers was his now offensive coordinator, Sid Gilman, a man who is known as the father of the modern passing game. Another look here. Hebert takes about a five, six, seven step drop, and again, it's the underneath cut. He's aiming for Mike Cobb, number 89, the hit there hard and aggressively by number 34 Aaron Mitchell well it looks like Mike Cobb will be okay and there's no question about the fact that Michigan's trying to establish the passing game seven of nine plays on this drive have been passes Jim Lampley in New York no American pro football quarterback has ever thrown for more than 36 touchdowns in a year Blanda and Tittle did that Jim Kelly started the day with 28 now he has 31 there's the most recent one a 13 yarder to 5'8 140 pound Gerald McNeil it's 21 nothing Houston and let's go back to LA so Houston chomping at the heels of the Michigan Panthers ready to take over first place in the Central Division unless the Panthers can come back to life and beat the LA Express here this afternoon it's Bobby A. Bear he's been red hot one interception stopped the drive earlier here He's got first down at about the nine-yard line. This is John Williams. Gets a block on the right side to the five, the four-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Michigan driving, but <clears throat> the same thing happened in the first quarter, Tim, and they had marched down, and this was the drive killer. Bobby Bear trying to throw to John Williams coming out of the backfield is picked off there with a leaping interception by number 58 outside linebacker David Howard, who's back off the injured list now and has been their most active linebacker. So it brings up second down from the four-yard line, just inside the four. As you look at Jim Stanley. Well, his insides have to be a little bit twisted right now. Two receivers to the right side. Broughton now goes in motion. Bang inside on the power play. That's John Williams. Charles Ussery stood up to meet the challenge. And now Michigan is down to the two. Good defensive surge there by the Los Angeles Express. We've talked about the massive front four they have, the aggressive players that they have on a very young and talented defensive unit. We talked earlier this year about the Express being a little bit like an all-star team. I've played in some all-star games myself. And even though you love being around these all-star performers, it takes time to get the timing and also to develop the right chemistry for winning. I know the assistant coach Stuart Dixon loves to coach that guy John Williams. He is a hard-nosed athlete. This is third down, one. Lacey over the middle. Touchdown, Michigan. The defense said he didn't make it, that he hit before the invisible plane and rolled in. Howard Carson made the hit, but they give Ken Lacey the touchdown, and I think he was in. Remember the ruling, Tim. If the ball breaks the plane of the goal line, it is a touchdown. Right there, it appears that the ball itself does not break the plane of the goal line. That it, it, Maybe his elbows do, but the ball appeared to be just shy of the goal line. However, it was, very, it was a little bit concealed, so we're going to assume the officials know something we don't, as they call it a touchdown. This is Novo Bojovic, and this is yard work for him. He just comes in and bangs him through with, with ease. He's 35 of 35 on extra points this year. So Novo Bojovic puts the cap on the touchdown. There's your score. Another look at the controversial touchdown by Ken Lacey. Straight up the middle, he leaps right there. Number 54, Howard Carson, the middle linebacker, gets the hit. And remember the ruling, the ball must break the plane of the goal line. It's very hard to see right there, but from a side angle earlier, it appeared that the ball was short. There's Novo Bajovic, number three, the flamboyant kicker out of Central Michigan. He's from Tito Grad, Yugoslavia. The deep men for Los Angeles. Number 24, Tony Bode, 83, Dwayne Gunn. This will be Tony Bodie at the nine. And he 
gets across the 20, and once he gets up to the 24, runs into a lot of trouble. So that's where Michigan will have the football. Steve Young will have to work from there from the 24. Seven threes are scored. Here's the Michigan scoring drive. The numbers, 12 plays, 82 yards. It took four minutes and 17 seconds, and the Panthers are dominating the time of possession. This first down for L.A. Only Bodie in motion. We have not seen Mel Gray come back into the ball game after he was shaken up. The star of that drive for Michigan was Bobby Hebert. He's now 9 of 13 for 107 yards, and right now he's with Martin White on the sideline. Bobby had to been a lot of confidence after the interception to come back and score on a drive. Yeah, well, you know, the first two times we got the ball, we really uh, moved the ball well. Um, I read um, man coverage underneath. Um, the linebacker just made a good play on the ball, and we just came back, and I think we just got to be consistent and move the ball because they can score a lot of points. Okay, Praise big, God. Yeah, big one for you. Back up to you guys. Second down, 10 yards. Young to throw again. Across the middle. Had the man, and it was dropped. Number 83 is Dwayne Gunn out of Indiana. About 116 passes at IU in three years. Had that one in his hands and should have caught it. Dwayne Gunn, of course, Tim, is one of the recent signees, a very talented rookie out of the University of Indiana. I covered him there in 1982 when he was catching passes from uh, Babe Laufenberg. That ball he should have caught. Well, it brings up a difficult situation for any quarterback. Third down and ten. Shotgun. Man defense by Michigan. They show blitz. Here they come. They pick up Corker. And it's almost picked off. Ron Osborne had it in his hands. And Young escapes a very tough situation there. Corker was on the blitz. They picked him up from coming through, but it was a poorly thrown ball and almost intercepted. Steve Young reads that blitz. Here comes John Corker, number 57. He is picked up. He's looking for Tony Bodie over the middle, number 24. And Ron Osborne, the safety man, number 23, steps in front. Should have had an interception. Jeff Partridge is on to punt. He was on one other time, and they came in and roughed him up. It was a first down for L.A., and they got the ball back. This one a short punt, but he gets a good roll. Down to the 30-yard line, and that's where it will stop. So, Bobby Bear will have the football in the 30 after that 46-yard punt. 13 minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first half from the L.A. Coliseum. The last time the Panthers had the ball in the Gross Cup, they scored a touchdown. That's an interesting graphic right there. Well, you made an interesting point when you talk about the offense. Well, they scored their first touchdown in over six quarters of play for that last touchdown. A bear first down, gives the ball off to Williams. Boy, what a hole he gets on the right side. Bangs his way past the blocker at the first down marker and carries that tackler out of bounds with him to the 43. Well, I know you talked to uh, George Dixon, uh, the assistant coach for the Panthers, and I visited with him before the game myself. He said it would be important to establish the wide running game, particularly with John Williams, who's been their most effective runner in recent weeks. He said not only would that help their trap game, but it would also help their trap passing game. They like play action passes and particularly like to fake the, uh, the underneath ball handling and go to some of the deeper routes. John Williams in the last three games has an average of 5.5 yards per carry. He has 33 yards already in this game. A bear incomplete. It was on the money, and Derek Holloway just dropped it. Good backside pressure that time by Eddie Weaver, the meat cleaver from Georgia. Eddie Meat Cleaver Weaver, who played on that 1980 national championship game with uh, Herschel Walker has been their most effective sack man. I don't think you've seen this, and you wonder how the guy got the name Meat Cleaver, but how'd you like to run into him while he's working? <laughs> Eddie Meat Cleaver Weaver. <laughs> oh, my. I, I haven't seen that picture. That, that would intimidate me if I were a quarterback. <laughs> In addition to that, he has a Mr. T stare. Second down for Bobby Hebert. Complete. Mike Cobb has his second catch of the afternoon, and he's up close to another first down for the Panthers. Tim, you mentioned it earlier, but for those who might be joining us late, Mike Cobb has now caught a pass in 33 consecutive United States Football League games. 
61 catches last year for Mike Cobb, and it looks as if the Michigan Panthers have decided that, yes, in fact, they want to go to the passing game more than they've been going in the last couple of weeks. Now, they have a very balanced attack, but it is tilted slightly toward the pass. Today, they're going even a little bit heavier in that direction. Now they come with two tight ends, a wing back is Mike Cobb, and the two setbacks. Right side power play. It's just a blast by John Williams for the first down. Michigan is one of the best possession football teams in the league, Tim. They've been right up there with Birmingham most of the year as the top possession team. You and I covered them in a ball game earlier this year against the Denver Gold where they beat the Gold 28 zip, and they were awesome in that game at well, controlling the football. They hold the ball on the average of 32.22 seconds per game, 32 minutes, 22 seconds. And they just converted that third down for a first down situation. Third down conversions, 45% of the time. So their numbers are solid. They've just had a couple of breakdowns. Good ball play, good fill, flags fly. Boy, I'm telling you, Howard Carson's playing another fine football game, and David Howard was there along with him. Number 54, Howard Carson, is going to be called there, apparently. No. He's the one who made the play. He's the one who made the play. John Williams is going to be called for a false start, I believe. Here's the call. Illegal motion, offense, number 40. Yep. Declined, second down. John Williams' false start, but it's declined. To amplify on what you were just saying, you know, in the giveaway takeaway category, Michigan has gone from a plus five to a minus seven. There we go. Let's take a look at it. See him jump on the right yeah. hand of your screen. Move too early. Referee today is Percy Penn. The umpire is John Bradley. Head linesman is Roger McMinn. The lines judge, Stephen Morehouse. Bill begins the back judge, side judge, Don Gassaway. And field judge is Robert Rao. So it's second and 15 now for Bear. That pass knocked down by Georgia Shika. And Big George is 6'5", 265 pounds. He puts those bear paws up, and he's like an eight-foot grizzly out there. And I don't like grizzlies in the middle of that line when I'm a quarterback. Bobby Bear, five-step drop right here. Watch number 75, who had a great career at USC. Georgia Chica leaps up here, swats the ball away with both hands. That's perfect timing. Mike Cobb was the intended receiver. George has been playing an awfully well lately, too. Two sacks on Chuck Fusina last week in Philadelphia. Third down. Bear. This time he has plenty of time. Throws across the middle. It's intercepted by Troy West. West slips down on the 45-yard line. And for West, that's his fourth interception in the last four games. Well, tempers flare a little bit now, and things are heating up, and this is good old-fashioned football now. Troy West has become the big play man. We talked about him at the top of the show. Now watch him at his safety position. He's backing up right in the middle of your screen. Bear trying to throw the ball down the middle, and with perfect timing, number 47 cuts in front of number 29, Derek Holloway, to make another key interception. From another angle, you can see it clearly right there. He knew exactly where that ball was going to be thrown, and he's had perfect instincts four weeks in a row now. From the 46-yard line on first down, Young just drops the ball after Tony Bode. Bode can't get a block, and he's leveled by the linebacker Kyle Borland. Was it a turnover? Or was he down? I think it was already whistled in, too. Well, I tell you, watch this, Cupper. Had he gotten one more step and gotten behind the blocker, it would have been Katie bar the door. Steve Young looks to his uh, left first, then he's throwing a screen back to his right to number 24, Tony Bodie. You see, I think his knee was already down before Kyle Borland jumps on the loose football. Borland was in perfect position. You saw the blocker coming in to take Borland out. Had Bodie gotten that block, there was nobody else home. He would have been into the secondary free. Mike Barrett was the guy who got there just a step late, and good hustle on his part. Young with time has another completion. That's JoJo Townsell. Won't be a first down, but it's a big gainer for L.A. JoJo Townsell in isolation is the man along the left sidelines. 
10 yards, little move to the inside, makes the cut to the outside. The ball thrown just over the head of John Corker and in front of Oliver Davis, the cornerback, who was probably with David Greenwood out of there, Tim, is the best athlete in their secondary now. JoJo Townsell holds the club record with 11 catches in one game and it came against these very same Michigan Panthers. That was his debut last year. Panthers show man defense. Corker on the trail of Young, who rolls out and gets the first down. Steve Young. One of the best running quarterbacks you'll see. Well, he has 4-5, 4-6 speed in the 40-yard dash, despite the fact that he's 200 pounds. He is also the first quarterback to run for 100 yards and throw for more than 300 yards in the same game. In the history of professional football, he is the only one to ever do it. That according to the Elias Sports Bureau. And Amazing that, feat. And that's in any league. Yep. This is Tony Bodie, left side. Tracked down by John Corker, number 57, the linebacker. Well, the big play was made by Troy West. He's been the big play man, and right now he's with Martin Wyatt. Two big plays by your defense to stop scoring drives, Troy. What, anything special you're doing? We're just trying to play hard through the whole game. We get the team to relax and, and don't play as hard, so we got to come with the big plays. You know, so every, every game we got now, you know, to the playoffs is going to be big plays to win it. Okay. So we're going to try hard the rest of the season. All right, back up to you. We're going to go back to the field. That's the interception by Troy West. He had a big interception against Houston in overtime that led to the winning field goal. And he had an interception last week against Philadelphia. This is Steve Young going game, incomplete. He had Freddie Scott, but Freddie had to turn around. You know, Freddie had a big game against Houston three weeks ago. He's been a little bit off ever since. Dropped a couple last week, dropped this one. He was turned around, but could have had it. Well, he's an 11-year player out of Amherst. Had a great career with the Detroit Lions. He's running a fade route here along the sidelines. No doubt about it, that is a very catchable pass. He just flat dropped it. Clarence Chapman was the closest man to him on the coverage. You know, he lives in Detroit, so this is a big ball game for him. He wants to beat these Michigan Panthers. He's also the oldest player on this team in 31 years. Third down and eight. Eight minutes left in the first half. Young in trouble. Now he scrambles. He picks up a couple of blocks. Bangs his way down to the 32-yard line, and he'll be close to another first down. He got it. You know, every time he runs like that, John Hadle's heart has to come up into his throat because he runs like a fullback. I was thinking the same thing. What worries me about Steve Young is that he runs like a running back and not like a quarterback. He doesn't do the hook slide. He's not looking for the sideline. Look at him here. He just puts the shoulder down and goes right into the uh, defender right there. The tackle made by number 22, cornerback Clarence Chapman. But Steve Young picked up the first down. Whoa, what a block by Kevin Mack on John Corker. You see that replay again. He put Corker in orbit. Big hole for Kevin Mack. Oh, he goes inside the 15-yard line to the 13-yard line. Kevin Mack. Big play for Kevin Mack, who's getting a chance to play due to the injury to Mel Gray and another injury to Darren Nelson. Good block by Wayne Jones, the guard, number 65, springs him into the secondary, and you see some of that power that you talked about earlier. John Hadle knew Kevin Mack had the talent, didn't know he had the rhythm since he hadn't practiced and certainly hadn't played in game situations that much with his ball club. This is Kevin Mack, and it takes four Panthers to take him that down that time, and David Tipton, 65, was the first defensive player there. David Tipton, what a career and a story he has had. Really got bounced around the NFL. Never really played. Went to camp after camp looking for the shot, hoping he could make it. It got so frustrating, he sent his wife home with the baby, and he went to Canada to try to make it with the Canadian Football League. Came back, went to work in a mine. Finally got a call and said, hey, how'd you like to play with us? Play's done. Kevin Mack on the right side picks up a couple of precious yards. And they weren't easy because he was going back after his friend John Corker and number 50 Ray Bentley. We saw graphically illustrated a moment ago the improvement in the, the rushing game of the Los Angeles Express. If you think back to last season, they were the worst rushing team in the league in 1983. And early on this year when we saw them, they were still weak. 
but they have improved dramatically in the last six or seven weeks. They were averaging only 90 yards running per game. They practically doubled that with Steve Young. Well, the young quarterback out of BYU wants to talk things over with John Hadle. So while they have timeout, we'll take one as well. Five minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Los Angeles trails Michigan. But right now, the Express are on the 10 and a half yard line. A big third down play. A drive engineered by Steve Young. Michigan giving them different looks, showing blitz, coming on the backside. Corker, Corker had the pressure on the backside. It rushed Young, and Young couldn't hit Tony Bodie, number 24. That's got to be some feeling, Lee Gross Cup. You sit there, you know the blitz is coming. You know they're coming from behind. You're trying to find a receiver, and you simply sacrifice your body. You know you're going to get hit, and you're going to get hit by a big man. John Corker is 6'6", 235 pounds, and last year he was the USFL defensive player in the year. He had 28 and a half sacks. There are the numbers on Tony Zendejas. He's 9 of 10 inside the 30-yard line. This is a 27-yarder, and it's good. So that'll tighten the first strings just a little bit, make it a one-point ball game. Zendejas, 11 of 12. Mike Cobb goes out of the ball game. We've got an update, too, as you look at Jim Stanley calling the plays. Mel Gray, the running back for Los Angeles, who left the ball game with an injury, now we're told he has torn cartilage around the rib area. He may or may not be back this afternoon. Right now, it's third and ten for Bear in Michigan. Goes after Button, intercepted. That's Tyrone Justin, the third interception of the game. For Los Angeles, the third interception at Bobby A. Bears Tyron Justin out of Cal State Fullerton. His brother Carey starts for the New Jersey Generals. That might be the biggest play of the day for the Los Angeles Express because right now they have a chance to put something on the board before halftime. Bobby A. Bear, seven step drop. He's aiming for his wide receiver, number 24, Walter Broughton, in perfect position to pick it off after the tip is number 20, cornerback Tyrone Justin. And now the Express are knocking at the door. I can understand the futility. I can understand the frustration, the frustration that Bobby Hebert is going through right now because he's put passes out there. They have been missed. They should have been caught. Passes that should have been caught turn into interceptions. He came into today's game with 16. Now he's got 19 interceptions. And the Michigan Panthers have had the ball four times this afternoon. He's thrown three interceptions and one touchdown. This is Young. He's got a man. It's a touchdown. touchdown. Freddie Scott. And Los Angeles wastes no time and comes back out to score the touchdown. Freddie Scott. That's his first United States Football League touchdown after quite a career with the Detroit Lions. Steve Young is going to be throwing a quick post pattern to his wide receiver on the left, Freddie Scott, number 87, out of Amherst. The ball is thrown with perfect timing, and watch how Scott reaches and extends the ball over the goal line. Remember the rule, the ball must break the plane of the goal line. He does that easily. And Scott, who wore the goat horns earlier with a couple of drop passes, redeems himself. Freddie Scott, 31 years old, played for the Baltimore Colts, played most of his career from 1978 to 83 with the Detroit Lions. Makes that 28-yard catch, his first touchdown in this league, and it puts the LA Express ahead of Michigan. That's called capitalizing on mistakes. Go in on your first play. The feeling here in Los Angeles is that this Express team has not nearly reached its potential, but they are getting closer and closer each week. This was the mistake that led to the touchdown. Watch again as Bobby Bear is trying to throw to Walter Broughton. The ball should be caught there, but it's tipped away, and Tyrone Justin, the quarterback, number 20, is in perfect position to make the interception, and that sets up the touchdown play. One of the rules I like in this league is the fact that you can go for the two-point conversion. So we have not seen Tony Zendejas, but we do see Steve Young walk back onto the field, along with Freddie Scott. So it looks as if L.A. will go for the two-point conversion. I agree with you. I like that rule. That was true in the old American Football League, too. It's a 12-7 score, Express. 
They want to make it 14-7 and round it out. Well, they bring in an extra running back, Ronnie James. They send Tony Bodie in motion, two tight ends, the fake in the line. Pressure from the backside on Young, goes for the corner, he's got it. Great block by Gary Zimmerman in the corner. It freed the way and opened the avenue for Steve Young to hit the corner and put two points on the board. Gary Zimmerman has been their most effective offensive lineman. Let's watch him, number 56. Steve Young, after a fake into the line, skirts the left side. Keep your eye on number 56, Zimmerman, right there as he gets a real shot on the corner and frees Young. Well, the youngsters are rolling. They say 50. Out of the 50 players on the roster, 42 are rookie or second year. In scouting report read that Los Angeles is an explosive team. I'll tell you how explosive they are. They just had two scores in one minute, 26 seconds. Tony Zendejas with a 27-yard field goal and Freddie Scott with a 28-yard touchdown pass. This is Zendejas who's kicking it off again. Albert Bentley takes it on the one. Across the 20, gets a hole, has the sideline to the 38-yard line. Albert Bentley. Good run back. Right now, let's go down to Martin Wyatt, who's with John Hadle. Coach Hadle, was that a special play that you had up made for those occasions, a two-point try? Well, it's a play we worked on all week for that situation, and uh, with Steve Speed, we felt like we had to run past option there, and uh, obviously it worked out pretty good. You didn't wait a long time. You pulled it right away here. Well, it's a five-point difference there in the score, and that's a percentage thing that uh, we worked on planned on. Okay, so. I know you got to get back to it. Back up to you guys in the booth. Okay, Martin, way to work down there. Well, I told you about Martin. He's an old running back out of the University of Washington, played for Jim Owens, was a big play man himself back in the early 60s. We've got three minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Michigan now. Trying to get back on the board. This is John Williams on a little cross butt. Gain of five. It'll be second and five. Howard Carson made the tackle. No one ever. I'll tell you something in a minute. This is something that the Panthers uh, hoped that they could establish after they once got uh, their outside running game going is to come with some inside traps and they get some good yardage there uh, before Howard Carson number 54 makes the play. John Williams number 40 along with Ken Lacy the setbacks. Here's the giveaway takeaway ratio Michigan minus 10 turnovers continue to plague them. John Williams good hold. First down and then some. Punishing tackle down to the 45-yard line. From ground level, look at the power, the drive, the leg drive of number 40, John Williams, who has been the most effective ball carrier for them in recent weeks. You said that George Dixon really likes his leg drive. He does. He's strong. Photo Wisconsin's most inspirational player, too, and I think George likes that. The Badgers are well represented on this Michigan team. Anthony Allen comes into the ball game now and comes to the bottom of your screen. For the early part of the year, he played here in Los Angeles. He's got the speed they hope can replace that loss when Anthony Carter was hurt. Williams gets the corner, turns it, and picks up three. Danny Rich was the contain man on that side. And in pursuit, ran him out of bounds. They need the speed outside that they lost with Anthony Carter. Maybe Anthony Allen is the man to do it. Well, we'll find out in just a minute. Right now, let's take time out as Bear wants to... Michigan needs seven yards for the first. It's second down. Incomplete intended for Derek Holloway. And again, the ball was in his hands, juggled and dropped. A little high, but definitely a catchable ball is number 29, Derek Holloway, runs a hook route. See that? It's in his hands. He should have it. Wyman Henderson is on close coverage. But that's three or four times today that passes have been dropped. It's one of the things we spotlighted at the top of the show, Tim. Drop passes, sacks, interceptions, and turnovers have taken Michigan from a plus five in that category to now a minus ten. All that in the last seven weeks. 
Third and seven, one minute, 53 seconds remaining. In the half, Mike Williams comes into the ball game along with Anthony Allen, Derek Holloway. They have three wideouts. Here's the pass to Holloway, and he makes the catch. Tremendous catch by Holloway down to the 17-yard line. Two viewpoints here. First the quarterback, then the receiver. Here's Bobby Bear setting up in the pocket. He's pressured right there, but gets the ball off. And then we look at Derek Holloway, number 29, comes inside first, then cuts up the middle, gets behind Dwight Drain, number 33. Daryl Patillo finishes him off. Daryl Patillo is number 46. That is pronounced Patillo, by the way, not Patillo. I don't know how the ball got through Patillo. This is Ken Lacy, left side. He runs into a whole host of LA Express tacklers. Lee Williams made the first contact. George Achika came in and finished him off. Always, always like it when you bring out whole host. <laughs> this to amplify what we were just talking about, Tim. This is what's happened to the Panthers today. Interception led to a field goal. Next interception led to a field goal. Next interception led to a touchdown. That was that pass from uh, Steve Young to Fred Scott. And following that was a two-point play. So you know that coach's cliche, mistakes will kill you? Absolutely true. Here's the time remaining. One minute, 15 seconds. Turnovers, last six games. Not a very good average. One thing that Bobby Hebert is doing, though, is throwing the ball well and reading the defenses very quickly. L.A. has given some complicated looks today. They've thrown some combination defenses where they go man to one side and zone to the back side and will also show blitz and disguise what they're doing quite well, but bear has been picking it up. Next to Jim Kelly, Bobby Bear has thrown for more yards than any quarterback in the United States Football League this season. He had over 2,800 yards coming into today's game. And again, he's been really hurt by drop passes and by break breakdowns in the protection. At times, of course, he's thrown the ball up for grabs himself, but it's really not his fault. Many of his statistics are misleading. Right now, he's 10 for 22, 142 yards. Now, last season, you're right, he hit a league high 3,500 yards and 27 touchdowns. Coached by Al Williams in high school. Williams also coached Terry Bradshaw. Second down and long. Anthony Allen in motion. The give to Williams. Gets a block, turns the corner, and goes down to the 12-yard line. Danny Rich and Howard Carson. The ones that brought him down there. Ground level look here from John Williams' viewpoint, and you see what he faces as two linebackers come up to greet him. Carson and Rich. Danny Rich out of Weaver State was the leading tackler on the team last year. Howard Carson, who played with the Rams, has emerged as the leader on the team, leads the team in tackles, and is kind of the captain of the defensive unit. Third and six. Bear drops deep, gets protection. Now under pressure by Weaver, and Weaver takes him down. Eddie Weaver who bench presses 535 pounds and sometimes runs like a rabbit, gets his eighth sack of the year. Well, he actually has eight and a half sacks. He's out of Georgia. We talked about him. You mentioned his strength. Bench presses over 500 pounds. Has been the most effective player in getting to the quarterback. Jumps up first, then closes in on Bobby Bear and ropes him down. Number 61, keep your eye on him here from another angle. Wards off a blocker there, loses another blocker there. That's Chris Godfrey. Gets around, jumps up first, and then closes in on Bear and pulls him down. He ran right by number 70, Chris Godfrey. Godfrey, by the way, has also signed a future contract, and he is going to play with the New York Giants. But the story on that play was Eddie Weaver. John Williams now, 55 yards, 13 carries. Novo Bjovic, number three, the field goal kicker, comes on to kick the field goal. There are his numbers. He had a streak of 10 straight, broken last week. This will be a 31-yard attempt. Bojovic hits it. And so Michigan comes right back with a score. And the Panthers. 
Waste little time to get back into it. It's now 14 to 10, a 35-yard attempt. I think I said 31. 35-yard attempt by Novo. Saw him at the Silver Dome on Thursday, and I was telling him that he just blew it down there in New Orleans, giving him a tough time. And he says, you know what? You're right. Freddie Scott is with Martin Wyatt. Let's find out how Freddie's doing. A big play. What, what happened? Was the special route something you told him about? Uh, no, it was a play directly from from the from the coaches on the sideline. They felt like we could get uh, a, a post on them, and it was a, a perfect coverage because the guys were off. The uh, throw was on the money. The throw was on the money. There's no, no doubt about that. Uh, how, how does it feel to have your first touchdown in this league? Well, to be quite honest, it puts everything right in line with, with the way I've been feeling about my spiritual life and placing God number one. And when you do that, he says that everything in your life, he says you lack nothing. Okay, this is a good team, I know. How good is it compared? I, I play with a lot of players, and uh, I am excited about our chances of going to the playoffs. And once we get there, I think that uh, you're going to see one of the better teams in the USFL. Thank you, Freddie. Good luck. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Well, the team certainly has the talent. 262 career NFL receptions. Freddie Scott. Novo Biovic will kick it off for the Michigan Panthers. You're looking at the deep men for the LA Express. There's Novo. And deep, of course, will be Wayne Gunn, 83, and Tony Bodie, 24. Will be a little squibber. And it's taken by Gunn. Gunn jukes, now loses ground, takes it back to the 25. He falls forward to the 26. Good coverage by Ron Osborne. Chapman was there to box him in. Osborne took him down, and Dwayne Gunn ran out of room. So the Express right now have 21 seconds to go nearly the length of the field. I don't know if they're going to try to do anything with that little time, Tim, unless they do one or two Hail Marys. Maybe three. <laughs> Well, you've got this type of quarterback back, back there that can make things happen and happen quickly. Steve Young, the All-American from BYU, a descendant of Brigham Young. The two wide outs, and he just hands it up the middle to Kevin Mack. But Kevin Mack finds the move, a big hole to the 40. Now it stopped the clock. Young does, and now I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for all the marbles. You've got 12 seconds left. Big play by Kevin Mack. There is a player that's injured down on the field. It looks like Jeff Hart. Jeff Hart, the injured player. And what a loss that would be. Jeff Hart, 6'5", 278-pounder, good speed. Started five years for the Baltimore Colts before joining this league with the LA Express. He is their offensive captain and gives them some leadership. But what you said is really true. That changes things because, remember, in this league, in the last two minutes of the half in the game, when a team makes a first down, the clock stops. So they've got a chance now to maybe get down in the field goal range for Tony Santana. Jeff Hart has played in 85 straight professional games. He is a tough customer. But when I did see him at practice several weeks ago, he told me he was playing with a pinched nerve. That nerve has gotten worse over the weeks, and we even mentioned it, or had it mentioned to us, rather, yesterday in a meeting, that if he does get that nicked up a little bit, it may be the last that we see of Hart for the rest of the afternoon and sit him down and rest him a little bit. Of course, our producer, big track fan, you know, he's trying to make sure we know all about track. With the Olympics coming up, just 69 days. Steve Young in trouble, scrambles out, lift legs, and he gets up near midfield, he goes down there. Well. There's your slide that you want it. And that should just about be the last play of the half. It is as time expires. An exciting first half. Both clubs move the ball. Big plays, turnovers, touchdowns, and field goals. Steve Young. He was impressive, Cupper. Great effort in the first half by Steve Young. All right, we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message and a word from our local stations. Gross Cup, it was a first half that moved the football up and down both sides. There were some turnovers, big plays. We thought it was going to be a close, uh, exciting ball game, and it has been that. This touchdown play by Ken Lacey is a controversial play that may come back 
to haunt the express later on. It appears as Lacey leaps there and is hit by Howard Carson that he comes up short of the goal line. Remember the rule that the ball must break the plane of the goal line. It appeared from that angle that the ball was short. Then Bobby Bear suffered turnover after turnover. Troy West, we talked about him at the very top of the show, has been a big play man. He steps in front of Derek Holloway, number 29, right there. And that interception led to a Los Angeles field goal. Tyrone Justin came in, and he made a big play for the LA Express. He read the pass all the way. Walter Broughton, number 24, is the intended receiver on the left side. He's the wide receiver on the left. Bobby Bear calling signals here, drops back seven yards, steps forward in the pocket, and aims for Broughton. The ball is catchable. It's tipped. Tyrone Justin, the cornerback, is in perfect position to take the tip ball. That fourth interception led to this touchdown. Now watch as Steve Young drops straight back into the pocket, throws a quick post pattern to Freddie Scott, his wide receiver on the left. The blitz was on. There was an opening in the secondary, and watch Scott as he surges forward there ahead of Oliver Davis, number 21, and puts the ball into the end zone. Los Angeles scored twice in one minute and 26 seconds with a Tony Zendejas field goal. They came back with that Charlie Scott touchdown. Steve Young, 6 of 13, 77 yards. Bobby Bear, 10 of 22 with 142 yards, and we're just about ready to start the second half. There's your score. In the back, you can see number three standing back with a trainer. That is Novo Bojovic. He just came out of the locker room limping badly. His pants are still undone. It looks either like a back problem or a hip problem, but he tried to kick, could not raise his leg. And oh my, Lee Grosscup, that could be a factor in this ball game. Remember, he limped off after his final kick of the first half. And uh, maybe he heard it on that play and re-injured it while he was warming up or maybe went into the locker room that way. We'll find out. We just went over to the booth next door and talked with the assistant Michigan coaches up top here, and they don't know what it is either. They did see him limp off the field. They saw him limp back on the field, and they think it could be a back problem. But we have Martin Wyatt down on the field, and he's going to check it out. This is Don Eccles, number 88, a tight end who is kicking off in the place of Novo Biovich. It's taken by Ronnie James, and James gives L.A. pretty good field position to start the second half. So a story developing. The assistant coaches up here in the booth don't even know what the problem is with Novo. Look, Lee Gross Cup at the stats of the first half. Interestingly enough, we talked about how Michigan is a possession team. You see the bottom line there, and you see that they have controlled the football. But Los Angeles is a big play team that takes advantage of mistakes. So right next to the bottom line is the turnover category. Michigan has given up the football three times. L.A. has been very opportunistic today. First down to the 34 for Steve Young. Loops the pass out to James. James gets two tremendous blocks and gets up to the 42-yard line as Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack, number 27 out of Clemson, had a good first half. Picks up close to a first down and be two yards shy. Here's the offensive talent for L.A. Steve Young's the quarterback. Kevin Mack, David Hersey, Freddie Scott, and Jojo Townsell, the wideouts. Your tight end is Darren Long. In the offensive line, Coppins, Durrett, Ruther, Jones, and Zimmerman. Jeff Hart was injured in the first half at tackle. As long as well as Mel Gray, the running back. He was shaken up. This is Kevin Mack again. Big gainer, first down Los Angeles. John Corker has to make the tackle, chasing him from behind. Right now, let's go downstairs. Martin Wyatt is with Novo Biovich. Okay, standing here with Novo Biovich, you're not going to be able to get back in. Is that true? The way I feel right now, it is. And uh, it's it's a very big pain right in my lower right leg and stuff. What happened? Was it the last kick play? Yeah, it was on the kickoff. And number 55 just came from the side. And just my body, my legs went one way. My other body went the other way. It was kind of clear. But, you know, referee didn't see it. And I just took a good hit. And I didn't even think I was this hurt, you know, but after two minutes, I was just getting more pain. Okay, that's too bad, Nova. Okay, back up to you guys. That was Sam Norris, number 55, by the way. All right, Martin White, thank you for that. And that's a tremendous blow, not only to Novo, but to the entire Michigan team. So Don Eccles, the tight end kickoff. Admirable effort, not a very fine kick. On first down, Young in trouble, scrambles, now drops the ball off. 
That's Kevin Mack to the 40. Pulls his way down to a close to a first down to the 47, the 37 yard line. Larry Bethea applied the pressure to Young and he just dropped it out to Mack. Let me tell you about that Michigan defense now. It is a multiple scheme. They run a 3-4. John Batisak, David Tipton, and Larry Bethea are your down linemen. The four linebackers are Kyle Borland, Robert Pennywell, Ray Bentley, and John Corker. Then the defensive secondary, Clarence Chapman, Tom Moriarty, who is substituting for David Greenwood, Ron Osborne, and Oliver Davis. This is second down and two. Max slips. Now gets up, and his second effort could have gotten the first. Kevin Mack having a good day filling in for uh, Mel Gray and also uh, uh, Kevin Nelson, both of the regular fullbacks or tailbacks. Of course, they call them fullbacks in this offensive scheme because they have an H-back player who usually goes in motion. But because of this offensive look, they are listed as fullbacks, and Kevin Mack is having a good day today. He this now is really has, his first big opportunity. He now has 52 yards and seven carries. His biggest day ever as a football player came against the University of Maryland. He rushed for 186 yards on 30 carries. Clemson beat Maryland 52 to 27 that day. Steve Young calls his own number. Not surprisingly, in short yardage situations. First down for LA. Michigan territory to give off again. Kevin Mack inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Robert Pennywell and David Tipton take him down there, but he's a bull. 200 pounder out of Clemson. He's running like a bull today. Steve Young, of course, is the latest and perhaps greatest in a long line of outstanding BYU quarterbacks as we look at John Hadle out of Kansas. I'll tell you more about that after this play, Tim. Kevin Mack led the nation's fullbacks as a senior. High formation, Tony Bodie in motion. It's a second down and six. Again, it's Mack. Again, he's inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. John Corker has been being blocked out all day. Watch this, Cup. John Corker, number 57, is matched up right here with Darren Long, number 89, the tight end. He does a good job of keeping Corker out of the play. And as a result of that, Kevin Mack runs inside of him off the left tackle. You know, the scouting report we had was that Darren Long was a fine receiver, but that Sherrod was the best blocking back. But it looked like Long did a pretty good job that time. This time, Mack will come up shy of the first down, but there is a flag. That time, John Corker rose up and met the challenge, defeated the blocker, and made the hit. Oh, my. Looks like another injury. That could be Kevin Mack. They're running out of tailbacks. Kevin Nelson's hurt. Mel Gray is hurt. And if Darren Nelson and Mel Gray are out, now Kevin Mack is shaken up. They could put Tony Bodie in that position. And Ronnie James. Let's go down now. Let's here's the call. We're not quite sure what it is. Maybe it's a late hit. Personal foul. Late hit, defense. Number 50. First down. Number 50. That's the linebacker, Ray Bentley. So Kevin Mack is still down, and while they work on him, why don't we take time out? We'll be back with our score, LA 14, Michigan 10. Kevin Mack is off the field now. He is shaken up. Here's the play. Ray Bentley, number 50, is the man who comes up and gets the late hit. If we can see it right here. Here comes Bentley. Just at the tail end of the play right there. You can see that Mack was already down. I think it's a good call, Tim. Well, Kevin Mack, he's caught two passes in this drive. He's run the ball five times, so he's been on every single play except Young's one-yard run for the first down on this drive. First and ten. Pass across the middle, knocked down nicely by Ron Osborne, number 23. Martin Wyatt, how badly hurt is Kevin Mack? Okay, he just got up off the bench. They said he got speared in the back of the head. 
Uh, he has a slight headache, a little bit of dizziness, but they expect him to be back within a couple of plays, maybe on this series. Back up to you. Okay, Martin, that means Tony Bodie and Ronnie James will now have to carry the burden. Mack leaves the game with 60 yards and 10 carries. Second down and 10 from the 12. Tony Bodie, not much there. He may have lost the yard. Good penetration by John Corker. Of course, Tony Bodie was a running back, and he debuted here in 1983, the very first game of the season against the New Jersey Generals. Got 77 yards that day. Outrushed Herschel Walker in that game. He's at a Montana State, 5'11", 195 pounds. Coming into this ball game, he had eight carries, 33 yards, so he has not been that productive. 11 receptions, he has scored one touchdown. This is third down. There's their third down efficiency. Young has to scramble. The fans tracking him down. The pass out of bounds, incomplete. It was intended for JoJo Townsell. But I'm telling you, Steve Young was under some heavy pressure. I said earlier in the telecast, Tim, that I thought that Steve Young was the most exciting scrambler that I have seen since Fran Tarkington burst on the scene in 1960 with a sensational effort that year against the Chicago Bears. Steve Young just has that unique ability to sense where pressure is, move out of that, and always be looking for a target downfield. 33-yard field goal attempt by Tony Zendejas. He has already hit a 46 and 27 yarder. This one is good as well. And the LA Express just keep right on flowing. Here's your score, Los Angeles 17, Michigan 10. Nine minutes, nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. Los Angeles holds on to a seven point lead. Number 32 is Albert Bentley. He is deep for Michigan. Three returns today, 100 yards. Bobby Futrell is back there with him, number 20. And that's Tony Zendejas, number 11, who just kicked the 33-yard field goal. This is a low liner, and it dies around the 10. Picked up by Bentley, gets a block, and carries the ball to the 32-yard line. And that's where the Michigan Panthers will have the ball. And they set up offensively. Hey, Albert Bentley has looked good on returns today. He really has. Number 32 out of Miami. Well, you liked him when he was down there with the, the Hurricanes. Mentioned earlier, he played both with Kelly and Kozar. Bobby Bear now has to get untracked. Three interceptions in the first half for Bear. You know, Bentley was a walk-on down there at Miami. Wasn't he That's right, he was. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. down Michigan from the 32. Walter Broughton in motion to give it to John Williams. John Williams runs into Howard Carson, but he drags Carson for six yards. Yeah, the story thus far has been Tony Zendejas, and right now he's with Martin Wyatt. Ten, ten points this week, Tony. Last week you had bad luck. Just missed a 53-yard one hit the goalpost. Must be back in the swing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good to make a few. You just got to keep on kicking them the same way. Sooner or later, they're going to go in. You haven't changed anything, huh? No, nothing, not okay. at all. Okay, good luck to you. Back up to you guys. It's quite a family, the Zendejas family. Cousins, uh, Tony's, he's got Joaquin's a cousin, plays for the Patriots. Max plays for Arizona, and Luis plays for Arizona State. And his brother Martin is a redshirt freshman at Nevada, Reno. This is John Williams, big hole out across midfield. Looking for a block to the 40, stiff arm down to the 37-yard line. John Williams. Twenty-seven yard run. That's the longest run of the day for the Panthers. John Williams on one of his favorite plays. Underneath ball handling there as A Bear slips the ball forward to him. Good blocking along the front line. He gets into the secondary and finally is brought down by number 22, Wyman Henderson. Watch the hole here. You can see the execution. This is what the Panthers do best. It's not that they really have a lot of finesse. They just execute well. Good block by Ray Penny, number 74, and Jeff Wiska, number 72, opens it up. Williams now 88 yards, 15 carries, eight bear to throw. Double pumps, reloads, goes long. Head complete. Intended for Derek Holloway. But the defensive coverage was sensational by Tyrone Justin. This has been an effective play for the Panthers at times as the deep post route to Derek Holloway 
The man on the coverage is number 20, Tyrone Justin, the cornerback. He's step for step right there and appears to bat the ball away with his left hand. You can't play it any better. You stay in the receiver's hip pocket, play him inside out, read the ball, and try to knock it away at its highest point. And he did that. Tyrone Justin. Second down now and 10 yards for the first. Michigan still trying to get something going. They had the big 27-yarder by Williams just a few minutes ago, and here he is again down to the 31. John Williams. The game plan for Michigan was to establish a wide running game first and then come with some inside traps. And that's what they're doing now. You this know, might be the best looking drive the Panthers have had this, uh, this afternoon, Tim, because they're doing what they really like to do. Good mixture of, uh, of running plays and play action passes. John Williams led the team with 18, 13 touchdowns last year in 1983. Walter Broughton in motion. Third down, timing pattern, incomplete. Walter Broughton almost made a sensational grab. That's a timing pattern, fade out. The ball has to be touch and go, and it was almost there, just a little bit too far. That's what it is, it's the fade pattern, and the ball is thrown with touch and timing. And Novo Bojovic has now returned to the uh, game, and he's, he's moving a little bit more gingerly, and uh, maybe he's going to kick again today. Well, he had left the field, and he just came running back on just now. So you can see him, looks like a new guy. Well, sometimes uh, either he, he got an adjustment or perhaps some medication. Maybe sometimes what, with ligaments, for example, a shot of cortisone can be very effective in, uh, in getting you back into the action. Well, we're going to see what the story is. Novo Bijovic back on the field. He will attempt this field goal. Very quickly. Let's go to New York. Jim Lampley has a report. We'll be back for the field goal after Lamps. Be trying it. Be trying it. Or is that for the Anderson? All right, we caught Jim Lampley by surprise in there. Lampley's singing, voice that other. singing a little song to us, yeah. <laughs> well, there's the story right now. We'll give you the update. New Orleans is beating Tampa Bay. Tampa's leading now, 24-17. Tampa Bay over New Orleans. But the story is Novo Bijovic, who is on to attempt this field goal. It'll be a 47-yarder. Snap to hold the kick. It's long enough, but it's no good. It's off to the side. So a valiant effort by Novo Bijovic, who obviously is still in pain as he lifts off. Misses the field goal, 17 to 10. Score remains the same. On this last field goal attempt, Tim, uh, you can see after he finishes, he appears to be a little bit gimpy here. However, I think maybe if he had made that, he wouldn't have been as gimpy. You know, it's sometimes when you get excited and you, and you succeed, the pain doesn't feel as bad. Steve Young, number eight, takes back the football and starts the offensive drive with a pitch back to Kevin Mack, who's now back into the ball game. Kevin Mack had left with an injury after a late hit. He's back in. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KNTV 11, San Jose, your ABC station. It'll be second and seven from the 34-yard line. Wayne Gunn and Tony Bodie, twin receivers, go to the top of your screen. So they're loaded up right. JoJo Townsell in motion that direction. Three receivers right side, and the pass goes to JoJo Townsell. Townsell is hit immediately, but drags Kyle Borland, the linebacker, another four yards. Here's the ice on Townsell. 
Jojo Townsell out of UCLA, who has been Steve Young's favorite receiver, takes a little sideline screen here, and what he does is he hesitates, waits for the screen to set up, but Kyle Borland does a good job of breaking through that wall and making the tackle in the open field. Jojo Townsell did a marvelous job of carrying the linebacker. Townsell is only 180 pounds, Borland 238 pounds, and he carried him at least four yards. Percy in motion, pitch back to Max, cuts against the grain. First down, Los Angeles. Kevin Mack emerging as one of the stories today as we look at Ray Bentley, the leading tackler on the Michigan team in isolation. Now you're an old linebacker yourself, Tim. What kind of a job does he do right there? Is he in good position or bad position? He's in pretty good position to make the play. You've got to keep your outside free. Tuck your tail, keep that low center of gravity, move in and make contact. He did that. The help was slow coming from the inside. Mack now has 66 yards in 12 carries. First down. Nothing fancy now. They're just tucking it away, letting Kevin Mack run the football. Well, we talked about this earlier. The Express seem to have found themselves a workhorse running back in this man, number 27, Kevin Mack, out of Clemson. And remember, they were the weakest running team in the league in 1983 and started out the same way in 1984. They have emerged as a stronger, much stronger running team in the last six weeks of play. What they still don't have, though, is that big, strong power back. All their backs are slight, frail, 180, 190 pounders. Young to throw. He does to Townsell, and Townsell is nailed by Oliver Davis. Incomplete. Closer look at Townsell's pattern right here as he's the wide out on the left. He's running a slant in route. This is one of the hardest passes to catch because you know you're going to get hit exactly as you catch the ball. Oliver Davis, number 21, the cornerback, did just that. The Express have 101 yards rushing today and 23 carries. Shotgun formation, third down. Six yards for the first. Here comes the blitz. Young in front, under pressure. Scrambles out. Now in trouble again. Drops the ball across the middle. First down. Kevin Mack. Tremendous second effort by Mack. Outstanding scrambling ability and big play by Steve Young. If you can get away from John Corker, you can get away from just about anybody. Now watch the talented... Steve Young, the All-American out of BYU. John Corker on the blitz is all over him right here. He dances away from Corker, senses pressure from the outside, moves forward, and on the dead run to his left under pressure, he throws to number 27, Kevin Mack, for a big first down play. Tim, that was an amazing individual effort by Steve Young. Eight-yard gain, first down. Young going deep, has a receiver right side, Townsell. Townsell makes the catch on the six and a half yard line. The book on Steve Young is that he is not much of a deep threat. But like Ken Stabler, sometimes because of the fact that they tend to underrate his arm, he can get the ball deep enough. 39 yard pickup. 39 yards. He's throwing that fade route along the sidelines to JoJo Townsell. And the ball is thrown with that nice, soft, looping trajectory. And the ball hits him right in stride there. He had to slow down a step. But that's about a perfect pass. Townsell now against Michigan. In the last two games, these two clubs have played 15 catches, 242 yards. Steve Young again. Touchdown, Michigan, to JoJo Townsell. They'll make it 16 catches, 245 yards, and two touchdowns for that man Townsell against this Michigan team. Five-step drop. Steve Young looks to his left first, turns back to his right. That ball couldn't have been thrown any better. It's the sideline cut by Townsell. The coverage was by Chapman. In isolation, watch his footwork. Little move to the inside, back to the outside, loses a yard. The ball is thrown perfectly. 
Extra, to extra point attempt by Tony Zendejas is good. So with two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the LA Express have taken a commanding 24 to 10 lead over the struggling Panthers. Steve Young, Kevin Mack, JoJo Townsell came up with big plays. Now Los Angeles has a 24 to 10 lead. That's Tony Zendejas who will kick off the deep men for Michigan. Albert Bentley and Bobby Futrell. High end over end kick. That'll be taken on the seven. Bentley. Up to the 35 yard line. Let's go downstairs now to Martin Wyatt. Okay, JoJo Townsell with the two big receptions on the long drive, of course, the touchdown reception. What happened on that one? Uh, what happened, uh, last time we were down there, we were, we were trying to get in with a slant pass, and they were kind of overplaying that, so we thought we thought if we go the corner route, maybe we'd be able to sneak one in there, and we'd be able to. So you told Steve then, hey, that's the play? Yeah, well, we both kind of said that, because uh, that's, a, that's a good play of ours, and he saw the last drive, so we went for it this time. You were right, good reception. Okay, back up to you guys on the field. Last year, JoJo held an 82-yard touchdown against the Panthers. On the 35, first and 10. This is John Williams looking for a block. Can't find a big play by the linebacker, Howard Carson, number 54. Tim, there is a point in every football game where you either turn things around or you go under. I think we've found that point right now for the Michigan Panthers. This drive might be the most important drive of the afternoon for them as we look at John Williams on the same underneath ball handling that has been effective for them. him. As he tries to go wide, however, number 54, the middle linebacker, Howard Carson, is right in his face. They have to get something going right now. I'm going to take that comment a step farther. I think it's more than just the biggest drive of the afternoon. I think it's the biggest drive of the season for Michigan. Bobby Hebert has time and receiver. It's Derek Holloway. And Holloway runs out of bounds on the 41-yard line in Los Angeles territory. And Aaron Mitchell beaten. I wonder if Bobby Bear heard us. Good six-step drop here. He's looking for Derek Holloway on a short corner pattern. He gets in behind the coverage right there. It's a zone look that time. And the coverage there with Henderson and Mitchell. 24 yards on the reception. Here he is in isolation. You see, he just gets in behind the cornerback and in front of the safety man. I'm talking about Henderson and Mitchell. Lacey and Williams, the split backs. And to give it to Williams. Side steps the linebacker, but Danny Rich has enough to trip him up. John Williams in isolation here. We've talked about his leg drive and how he is the big play man for the team. Danny Rich out of Weber State, the leading tackler on the Express team in 1983, has been a consistent player for them again in 1984. Well, the Michigan Panthers have so much talent and they've suffered through so much adversity with the injuries. Face with a dilemma. Houston winning big in the center division. Michigan has to win to keep pace. This is a completed pass to Walter Broughton across the middle. Working on number 33, Dwight Drain. Walter Broughton, who has been effective at times filling in for Anthony Carter, starts in motion to his right, comes up the seam. Now watch what he does here, Tim. Makes a little move outside, cuts underneath a yard and catches the ball in front of safety man Dwight Drain number 33. Well you may have heard the gun. That's the end of the third quarter. The United States Football League Panthers and Express will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. The Michigan Panthers with a pretty good drive and they need it badly. To the 32 yard line. It's third and one. Their third down conversion ratio 44% of the time. They can convert. This is Williams, and this is one of the times he doesn't convert. He came up shy. Good fill by the linebacker, Howard Carson, who I think Lee Gross Cup is playing a spectacular football game. 
I think if we had to name an MVP for defense, it would certainly be number 54, Howard Carson. He has been right in the thick of everything all afternoon. Let's watch Howard Carson in isolation right here. You see him, and maybe you'd like to comment on this, Tim, because you were a former linebacker yourself, but he appears to me to be in absolutely perfect position and does all of the things fundamentally that a linebacker should do. Well, the first thing he did, he took no false steps. He took on the blocker, defeated him, skated off the blocker, came up, and made contact. You could be even more than a former linebacker. You could be a coach with language <laughs> like that. Well, he... Unfortunately, he wasn't there soon enough because they did say he got the first down. So what it looked to be a little bit shy, came up just a little bit past the mark that he needed, and he had the first down. Saying that Howard Carson gave us a clinic. 30-yard line now. Williams gets the call on first. And again, the defense swarms. Let's go downstairs now with Martin Wyatt. Okay, with David Tipton, the heart of the Panther defense, how important is this drive, not just for this game, but for you guys overall in the season? Well, we're 14 down now. Obviously, we got to get points on the board. It's fourth quarter. Season, I don't know. We got uh, six uh, games with this one left, and the West uh, Conference is going to be a toss up this year anyway. So I I'm not concerned about the whole season, but uh, we got to get points on the board right now. Okay, David. All right, back up to you guys. David's wife, Sally. Competition weightlifting. Abair, second down and long, drills it into the ground and bounces it over to Walter Brock. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't want to be in a family scuffle when Tipton <laughs> and his wife go at it. I was thinking the same thing. We look at the third quarter numbers and look how close it's gotten now in terms of the time of possession. There's something we talked about. The key still to the game is the fact that Michigan has turned the ball over three times and L.A. has capitalized on those mistakes. But in every other category, Tim, it's very, very close. Look how close this game is statistically. Third down. First, and A Bear drops it out, and it's dropped. It was intended for Cleo Miller. And Cleo Miller just dropped the football. Low angle look at running back Cleo Miller here as he swings out of the backfield. Bobby A Bear is dumping the ball off to him, and that's certainly catchable. And that's about four or five dropped passes today for Bobby Bear. One of the things that we spotlighted at the top of the show, we detailed for you all of the problems that the Panthers have been having here during the 1984 season. And they're going for it on fourth down, nine yards. Bear, big play, under pressure, and he's dropped, sack Bear. 75 for the Chica, came through cleanly and made the big play on fourth and nine. An impressive young ball club. They have talent galore, and one of them, of course, is number 75, Georgia Chica, one of two bookend tackles out of USC. <laughs> well, what a turn of events. A gamble on the part of the Panthers because they still have plenty of time with 13 minutes left in the game. We have seen Jim Stanley do that before. We saw him do that in the playoff game last year against the Oakland Invaders. That time he was successful. Second sack of the day on Abraham. Steve Young now puts Hershey in motion. It's Kevin Mack picks up a blocker, punishes a tackle, and takes it out to the 45. Well, you made a point earlier. You said they don't have that big bruising running back, but I guess Kevin Mack is maybe the closest thing they have to that right now. The other guys are kind of uh, more of the scat back variety. I'm talking about Gray and Nelson, but Mack is a pretty good horse. He looks bigger than 200 pounds. He does. He's got 76 yards today on 14 carries. Jojo Townsell comes to the bottom of the screen. We'll see in motion. Tight end is long. The give is to Mack. And this time Mack runs into a whole lot of angry Panthers. 
John Corker throws him down. And that draws some booze from the crowd. Say what you will, but that John Corker is a feisty, aggressive, talented linebacker. 28 and a half sacks in 1983 as he became the USFL Defensive Player of the Year. This will be third down. They need four for the first from the 45-yard line. Remember, Steve Young can run himself in situations like this if he doesn't find the receiver open. Brady Scott to the bottom of the screen. JoJo Townsell to the top. The lone setback is Kevin Mack. Young. He's going for Scott. Scott has the first down at the 44-yard line. Well, it was Achika who made the sack on fourth down. Right now, Martin Wyatt is with Achika. Okay, we're down here. They're giving George a lot of congratulations. Big sack. I mean, you must have just laid your ears back and said, hey, I know this is it. Well, you know, the offensive line has been getting their stance away, so we just keyed on the line. I knew it was passing. I just got my pass with a stance. And plus, my DBs are doing a good job where he's not getting the time that he should have. So we're doing a good job defensive line and DB wise. You're going to get a game ball. Okay, back up to you guys. George had two sacks with Christina last week. Really been hot lately, applying a lot of the pressure. Long count by Young, reads the defense, sees the blitz, calls an audible, backside pressure, ducks, gets out, throws it complete, this is Long, cuts back at the 20, 15, down to the 10 yard line, Darren Long, and there is a flag. And where the flag is dropped up near midfield, that usually means holding. But another big play by Steve Young. Dwayne Gunn appears to be injured. He was the wide receiver on the play. Another great individual effort here by Steve Young. Watch him scramble. Now he senses pressure coming right here from the outside. He ducks under John Banizak, number 76, moves out to his right, and as a left-hander throwing on the dead run to his right, he finds his tight end, number 89, Darren Long. Darren Long, the most prolific tight end receiver in NCAA history. And remember, too, Tim, they also have Gordon Hudson waiting in the wings, assuming that Hudson returns healthy in 1985. I hate to do this to a producer, but if we can roll that back, I want to show you the block by Kevin Mack on David Tipton. Oh. That is the first penalty of the day for the Express. Holding, offense, decline, offensive pass interference, offense, 10 yards, loss of down, second down. David Tipton, number 65 for Michigan, is 260 pounds. Watch 27 right here in the middle of your screen. Look at oh, the block of Tipton. That is a great block right there on Tipton. Now watch again as Steve Young scrambles away from Banizak, moves out and finds Darren Long, his tight end. Long, of course, is out of Cal State Long Beach. Tipton was shaken up, and Kevin Mack is only 200 pounds. Second down, 20 yards for the first. Long count, shotgun formation by Young. Backside pressure, Young has to scramble. And he runs out of bounds on the 47-yard line. Wise move that time by Young because he had Big Allen Hughes just breathing down his neck. Another thing that impresses me about Steve Young, Tim, is that he appears to have incredible, incredible peripheral vision. He seems to have a wonderful sense of the field and always knows where that pressure is coming from, even when it's on his backside. I think he has radar. Watch this. This is what I'm talking about. Out of the shotgun, He's looking downfield. Now, Alan Hughes is the man applying pressure on the backside. Young senses that, moves out of trouble, and wisely steps out of bounds. John Corker was uh, giving him a little heat, too. They still need 15 yards for the first. Michigan shows blitz, now drops off. Just a third down play, shotgun. Again, Corker, backside pressure. And even though the whistle blows, he wants to throw Young down and make sure he got him this time. Good blitz by number 57, John Corker. That is the second sack on the day of quarterback Steve Young operating here out of the shotgun. 
And there's John Corker, number 57, the sack man himself, 28 and a half sacks last year. And he's coming on strong again now after a slow start in the sack department. Jeff Partridge is on the punt. Anthony Allen is the deep man. Anthony Allen played with Washington last year to Jeff Partridge. I mean, he takes it and shoots it out of a cannon into the end zone for a touchback. A 54-yard punt by Jeff Partridge. So the Michigan Panthers will start on the 20. It's 24 to 10. We're into the final nine minutes and 46 seconds of this ball game. The Michigan Panthers need something to happen quickly. They trail 24 to 10. Bobby Abear is the engineer. And he starts this drive on his own 20. Eric Holloway to the bottom of the screen. The top is Walter Broughton. The setbacks, Lacey and Williams. Abear sets up the screen, drops it off to John Williams. Gets a block across the 30, and he takes it to the 37-yard line before Aaron Mitchell trips him up. Good-looking play. We have seen the Panthers be effective with a slow developing screen before, and one of the reasons they are effective is because they do have a good deep passing game. Hebert looks deep first, then throws back to John Williams in the left flat, picks up a good wall of blockers. Tyrone McGriff gets the first block, and he's finally brought down by number 34 in the secondary, Aaron Mitchell. 17-yard gain, first down. Bear under pressure, sacked again. This time it's Lee Williams who came through and put A Bear down for the third time today. Lee Williams, the designated sack man and considered the best pass rusher on the team, is one of two talented rookies out of Bethune Cookman, and he is right there in A Bear's face. An eye opening statistic is that Bobby A Bear has been sacked. 30 times this year. And the Express, as you can see by those numbers, know exactly how to do it. They can put a quarterback in the seat of his pants. This is Ken Lacey. They dropped the ball to him over the middle. Lacey gets up just past the original line of scrimmage. A good look at a circle route by Ken Lacey. See, he, he watches the linebacker, then cuts back underneath. A Bear hits him right on the numbers. He picks up a block there. And look who comes back to uh, jump on him right there is number 61, Eddie Meat Cleaver Weaver. There's a the guy who's been busy today. Third down and nine. The ball at the 37. Time now. The enemy of the Panthers. 7.50 left in this game. A Bear going deep. Intended for Walton Brock. He drops it. Broughton may have had a step on Tyrone Justin. The ball was there, but Broughton dropped it. Everything that we detailed for you in our pregame show has been in evidence today. Drop passes, sacks, turnovers, the problems that the Panthers have been having. That ball could not have been thrown any better. It was thrown to the outside with a soft looping trajectory. Here is Bear's reaction. Look at this. Talk about frustration. I don't blame him. I don't either. He's had five passes dropped today. He's 14 for 31. This is Michigan's first punt of the day. And it's a poor one. It's partially blocked. John Mack, who is the punter, substituting for the injured David Greenwood, didn't get it at all, and I don't know how it was blocked. It wasn't it, blocked. It appeared that it was partially blocked. Either that or he just shanked it. He shanked it. That's a 16-yard punt. I don't think anybody was near him. Well, he just missed it. John Mack. It's only his second punt with the Panthers, and it wasn't a very good one. Okay, Bobby Bear. it looks like that everything's happening here. Drop pass will probably just characterize your whole day. Uh, hey, we've just been making too many mistakes um, to come out on top. Um, you know, offensively, we came out well the first half, but we've been a little shaky. Um, 
defense is pretty well at times, but you know we haven't put it all together today. Okay, you're the quarterback, the heart and the soul of the team. Is this team going to hold together? How are you going to get them together? Well, we just have to um, hang in there. You know, it's, um, we still got five games left, six games left. We're still not out here. If we can get a big play, you know, we still can come back. Um, we just need a big play right now. Okay, good luck to you. All right, back up to you guys, and thank you. Bobby Abair from Cutoff, Louisiana, class individual. He could have said they're dropping my passes. He could have thrown blame. He didn't point any fingers. Seven minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the ball game here. That's Tony Bodie. Trouble is, Bobby says they need a big play. That may have been the big play. The play that Walter Broughton just dropped. The pass that he just dropped. That ball was thrown perfectly. It could have been a touchdown. Good defense that time by the Panthers. A lot of pursuit. Everybody still running to the football, trying to get around the ball carrier. I can tell you as a former quarterback that there is nothing more frustrating than to throw a perfect bomb for that nice soft looping trajectory and see your man uh, beating the defender and then having dropped the ball. That's Steve Young. Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack. He picks up one. Well, the defense is still getting after some folks. And if you look at the clock with 6.35 remaining, there's still time. But the door is rapidly closing. Beautiful day in Los Angeles today. Low 80s, light breeze, clear skies. You can even see the mountains in the distance. I think because of that, consequently, a lot of the people went to the beach. We've got 10,193 here in the cavernous L.A. Coliseum. Matter of fact, in six minutes, I'll be heading to Malibu. Lee Gross Cup. <laughs> I don't blame you. Malibu Express. Third down, nine yards. Hey, this is Young. Throws across the middle. And Freddie Scott can't hold on. Well, they didn't eat up much of the clock there. They didn't get a first down, three plays, and they're out. And that's not what John Hadle would like to see out of his offense. Absolutely not. Michigan still has a chance now. Yeah, Plenty of time, 5.55. This is Jeff Partridge. He's been busy here the last couple of minutes. He'll be kicking to Walter Brock. Tail wagon. And again, it goes into the end zone, and they'll bring it back to the 20. So, Partridge does his job. 53-yard punt. Touchback, Michigan. Still has five minutes and 47 seconds. Interesting little piece of work here by Walter Broughton on the last punt. I've seen guys fake fair catches before, but watch him. He fakes a real catch. He pretends to be catching the football. I don't know if he throws anybody off or not, but it's kind of cute. Five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the final stanza from the L.A. Coliseum. The Express lead at 24 to 10. The Panthers have the ball first down at the 20. L.A. in a zone, backside pressure. This is a little drop pass to John Williams, and he just drops the football. So that's six drop passes on the day for Bobby Bear. He's now 14 of 32. Well, that's not really a drop pass, though. It's a completion. He drops the ball for a five-yard loss. You're right. So it's a completion with a fumble. Tampa Bay leading New Orleans, 24-20. Big, big game down there in the Southern Conference, Southern Division, rather. Houston leads Oklahoma 31-10. That game has a direct bearing on the Michigan Panthers. And San Antonio, 30-14 over the Washington Federals. Possibly soon to be the Miami Federals. This is Lacey after the 25-yard line. It's interesting to see what's going to happen to the Feds now that Woody Weiser has purchased the team. Ken Lacey, on a, again, on a route that has been effective for him. It's the same circle cut he ran just a few minutes ago. Comes underneath the coverage there. Bear right on target. Again, a good hit by number 54, Howard Carson, the middle linebacker for the Express. 
We have to total up his tackles. He's had quite a day. Four minutes, 22 seconds left in the ball game. A Bear trying to beat the clock. This is third down and short yardage, and they are going to get the first down. John Williams tries with extra effort, but the defense fills nicely and quickly. Well, the offense wasn't able to generate anything, and so again, Michigan will have to give it up. So bring on John Mack, the man who shanked the last punt. An 18-yard squibber. Dwayne Gunn is deep for L.A. Low snap. Well, it's a little bit better, but still not a great punt. It goes up to the 40, and it looks like it'll die on the 41-yard line. So, John Mack struggling as a punter. A 31-yard attempt. Michigan struggling in the Central Division. 326 left. Los Angeles 24, Michigan 10 with 326 remaining in the ball game. And if Los Angeles holds on to win this ball game, this is the way the standings would look in the Central Division. Houston would take over first place with an 8-5 record. They are beating Oklahoma right now. And Michigan, if they lose this ball game, would drop to 7-6 in second place in the Central Division. And quite frankly, having lost six of their last seven if they drop this one. They'll be in dire straits even to make the playoffs. Cup. Very surprising because we thought at the, uh, the top of the year that Michigan would dominate the Central Division. This is Kevin Mack, cuts back against the grain, picks up three. Well, Michigan did win six in a row, and they were dominating. Los Angeles, of course, the hottest team in the Pacific Division. They win here today. That means they've won two of their last three, three of their last four, rather. They move up to six and seven in a tie with Arizona in second place. Arizona beat Denver last night, 41 to six. Los Angeles and Arizona, though, play each other twice. That's going to be really some kind of shootout. Home and away. So Denver now in the tailspin, and definite self-destruction type pattern. We're opening the door for Arizona and Los Angeles. Don't that be surprised to see Los Angeles come in and take that division. That's Kevin Mack. Next week, Los Angeles plays Arizona right here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. To finish a thought, though, don't forget the Oakland Invaders, a team that was 0-9. They now have four straight wins, and they are the defending Pacific Division champions. Mathematically, they're not out of the playoffs. It's amazing. How'd you do in math in college? Uh, we're looking at the linebackers now. I'll come back to that in a second. Look at the linebackers for the Michigan Panthers. Robert Pennywell, along with Will Coakley, number 58, in on the tackle. Kevin Mack, the ball carrier there. Math was not my major. Mack now has 82 yards. <laughs> I've done better since I got a home computer. Well, things aren't so jovial for that guy right there. Jim Stanley, quality coach, took this team last year from a one and four start to win 11 of its final 13 games and take the first ever United States Football League Championship. John Hadel has turned this club around from a slow start, a mix of young players, and now he has them very much in the thick of the Pacific Division race, very much in the hunt for the playoffs. They have one of the most talented group of young players in the history of professional football. Don Foster, the general manager, has gone out and signed some of the most impressive young talent that I have ever seen. Headed, of course, by Heisman Trophy runner-up Steve Young, the All-American out of BYU. And you know, Lee Groskop, I've mentioned this twice already today, but I think it's worth repeating is the fact that out of the 50 players, 42 or second-year players are rookies. It's a good reminder. Third down and seven. Young to throw with two minutes remaining in the ballgame. He throws across the middle, incomplete. He was intended for Darren Long, and he wanted pass interference. He didn't get it. I think Steve Young wanted it as well. So, you heard the whistle. That's the two-minute warning from the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Express trying to hold on, leading 24 to 10. Jeff Partridge is on to kick it away for Los Angeles. He's just come off his two longest ever punts, 54 yards and 53 yards. On the other side, Michigan's last two punts by John Mack have been 18 and 31, so you can see the differential there. Good 
Big snap. A lot of pressure. He just tries to get this one away. There is a flag, and the ball rolls down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Now we've got to see what the flag is. But a good job by Partridge under a lot of pressure just to get that ball out of there. Jeff Partridge has been in a bit of a slump this season. Let's listen to the call. This may be one of the reasons. He's under a lot of pressure here as he tries to get the ball away. Look at that. Guys all around him. Mike Williams, number 80, is there. 38 yards total. Well, he'll get another shot at it, too. You remember that Partridge, along with... Holding offense, number 47, fourth down. It's hard to say that Partridge, along with Stan Talley of the Oakland Invaders, were the two premier kickers in the league last season. So he's been off this year. Well, they load up again. They've got 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Michigan's coming full house. They want to block it. They need that play with one minute and 48 seconds left. Good snap again. A lot of pressure. Partridge gets this one out, and he puts it way high. Anthony Allen takes all the way back to the 16-yard line. Gives a stutter step. Kevin Turner gets there first. Everybody else follows him, and he's down. A 49-yard punt. Steve Young is with Martin Wyatt. Okay, Steve, a big, big game for you guys. A young, maturing team to win this game like that. Uh, you must feel good about it. Oh, yeah, we really came in. We had five starters out, and I'm telling you, some of those guys really rose to the occasion. Kevin Mack, Kevin Mack. Uh, you know, he hasn't played very much. And I, you know, isn't that something to see somebody come in like that and play well? I'm, I'm really proud of our guys. you got to feel good. The way you're maturing, I can see it on the field. That you're the leader of the team, and the guys respect you a lot. Well, that was a big thing. You know, coming in the middle of the season, that's not easy to do. I thank you for the compliment. I just got to keep working at that. That's my biggest responsibility right now. Well, I can see it happen. Okay. Okay, back up to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Steve. Derek Holloway is down on the field. He was injured on that last play. Now, I told you that Michigan put 10 men on the line. They brought in all their speedsters, their burners, the guys that could get in there quickly. Holloway was one, and he got nicked up. Well, at least he's up and he's walking off. So I think he's going to be okay. Derek Holloway should be okay, we hope. I started to mention earlier that Steve Young is part of a great quarterback tradition at BYU. Started back in the 60s with Virgil Carter, and then there was Gary Scheide, of course. Gifford Nielsen followed him. Mark Wilson was next. I thought that they had found the consummate quarterback in, uh, in Jim McMahon. And now maybe the latest and greatest of them all is this man right here, Steve Young, who threw better than 71% last season for an NCAA record. He had 13 NCAA records in 1983. He was uh, Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year, two years running. Today he is 13 of 25 for 162 yards. Well, with Derek Holloway out of the ball game, Michigan brings in Mike Williams, Walter Broughton, and there goes Anthony Allen, 87 in motion. Hebert. Throws to Lacey at the 25. Lacey back pedals, picks up a block, now gets out to the 28-yard line. Forces his way to the 29, and that's where Michigan will have it. We've talked all day about middle linebacker Howard Carson, number 54. Watch how he patrols the field. This guy plays wall-to-wall -wall linebacker. Look how much ground he covered on that play. Anthony Allen makes the catch up near midfield. Of course, Anthony Locked Allen. Down one minute now. Anthony Allen was with the same expre the, the express team earlier, out of the University of Washington. Hurry up, offense! A Bear sends everybody out wide. Still has his two setbacks. We're under a minute now, and A Bear throws right side of John Williams. Williams to the 46-yard line. No huddle. A Bear trying to get a timeout, and now he goes. Well, we talked about the problems Michigan had experienced in our pregame show with Anthony Carter being hurt, the contract disputes, David Greenwood going down, Tyro McGriff being hurt off and on, Chris Gottfried going to the Giants, and Ken Lacey going to the Chiefs. All of that obviously had added up and taken away from the performance of the Michigan Panthers. Now they have to regroup, try to pull it all together. We've got 47 seconds left here today. 47 seconds left in the ball game. That tells it all. 24 to 10 is our score. 
Bobby Hebert trying to throw something together to get back on the board quickly. Hoping against hope, maybe one miracle remains. Rolls right, throws deep. Intended for Walter Brock. Hail Mary. Brock makes the catch. Touchdown, Walter Brock. You called, you called for a miracle, and you got one. Walter Broughton, who dropped what looked to be a touchdown pass two series ago, makes that grab for a 46-yard score. This is exactly what you called for, a miracle, a Hail Mary pass. All Bobby Hebert is doing is throwing it as far and as long as he can and hoping that something will come up. Now watch what happens. The timing is perfect by Walter Broughton, but it's not so good by Tyrone Justin. Justin jumped a little bit too soon. As a result of that, Broughton was right in behind him and made a sensational catch. He dropped the easy one. He made the tough one. Novobiovic, extra point attempt is good. It's now 24 to 17. Novo limping off again, holding his right hip. Obviously, there's some pain that seems to be emanating from the region of his right hip. Apparently, he put some heat on it earlier, stretched out a little bit, and then came back in the game. Now, he appears to have re-injured that same area. Well, we saw Bobby Hebert's reaction after Walt, Walter Broughton had dropped the long pass for what looked to be a touchdown. Cooper, let's watch his reaction this time. Here it is right here. Bobby Hebert, you saw him earlier when uh, Broughton dropped the pass. He finally gets a sense right about here. Well, <laughs> he's pretty casual about it. I wonder if he's saying it's about time. Yeah, he kind of had that look, didn't he? Well, we've got 36 seconds left. Stranger things have happened. Novo will be over to lift off. You saw him obviously in pain. He's back on to kick the ball away. And I don't think there's anybody, even the novice, in this audience at the L.A. Coliseum who expects him to actually kick the ball away. He will try the onside kick. They're in that formation. Everybody overloaded on the right. And they got it! for the touchdown. And Novo Biovic is now really in pain. He's up at the 35 on his knee. Biovic is down in pain, but a big, big play for the Panthers. He kicked that ball perfectly. He kicked the onside kick exactly the way you like to see it. Did it go 10 yards? There's a discussion now near midfield. Watch it as he kicks the ball, a nice high bounder along the right side. Let's make sure that it goes 10 yards before it's fielded by number 22, Clarence Chapman. It appears that it indeed has crossed the 10-yard mark. Yeah. Well, you can't run with an onside kick. You can't advance, you cannot the advance the ball. Right. With 31 seconds left. Bobby Hebert, the quarterback, and we'll see if he has another miracle. Left in his hip pocket. Rolls right. Again, it's Walter Broughton, incomplete. Aaron Mitchell and Dwight Drain were there to knock it away. Here's Walter Broughton on the tail end of this last play. He's running a deep post pattern, and Hebert's just throwing up another Hail Mary pass. The coverage there in the secondary by Dwight Drain, number 33, and number 34, Aaron Mitchell, the two safeties back there. They're just in a prevent defense. They're going to say, hey, take something underneath, but you're not getting behind us. Broughton has made five catches for 110 yards. They load him up to the left side, bottom of your screen. Broughton. Hebert now steps up in the pocket. Throws it to Broughton. He's got it down at the 28-yard line. The clock down to 13 seconds. No timeouts left for the Panthers. Everything now has to be... Watch this. 
Watch this. A bear right down the middle. Throws to Walter Broughton, and that gives them the first down. And they're in shooting range right now, Tim. 11 seconds. This ball knocked away. That was Fletcher Jenkins, the defensive end, who got a hand on it. And the clock now is at seven seconds. He's got to throw for the end zone. Well, he's got one play, possibly two remaining. He could throw a sideline pass. Look for the gadget, maybe a little hook yep. and lateral. Anthony Allen goes to the top of the screen. Eric Holloway and Walter Brock to the bottom. A bear now, 21 of 39, but nothing more important than what he has remaining here. Four seconds left, and he throws it away. He'll have one play left with one second remaining here at the Coliseum. A bear straight drop, looks to his left. Scans the field and now throws back to his right. He's under a lot of pressure there by Lee Williams, number 73, that talented rookie out of Bethune Cookman. He also ran into his own man, Tyrone McGriff. Mike Cobb comes into the game now as another receiver. John Williams goes out. Derek Holloway, Walter Brock. Anthony Allen. Another Hail Mary. All receivers are in. One second left. This is going to be it. Time has expired. A bear throws deep. Incomplete, but there's a flag, and the game can't end on a penalty. Depending on who it's against. An ineligible receiver down. Well, it's against Michigan. The game's over. So that's it. You heard the gun. The ball game is over. And the Panthers drop another one. L.A. holds on to win, but what a finish, Lee Gross Cup. Great finish. We had a super ball game today, Tim. We thought it would be this kind of a game, and it was. And it was great to see Steve Young for the first time this year. It's the first time we've had a chance to cover him. There he is. The All-American out of BYU played for Lavelle Edwards there, the latest and perhaps greatest in a tremendous tradition of BYU quarterbacks. And the Express are on the move. Well, the Express have won three of their last four. They're now solidly in second place. They've got a shot at it all. The final score, L.A. 24, Michigan 17. So, for Lee Gross Cup, this is Tim Brandt. They will be right back after this message. Well, Los Angeles wins it 24-17. Once again... Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. This year, the Olympic tradition continues. So, Los Angeles gets its miracle. It came down to this, Tim. It was the last play of the ball game. Bobby Hebert putting up another Hail Mary pass. And we thought it would be a, a game like this where it might come down to the last play. Now this is actually the, the one that is caught by Walter Broughton. This is not the last play, but it's the last touchdown play of the game. Walter Broughton redeeming himself for a pass he dropped earlier in the day that would have been a touchdown. So Steve Young ends up 13 of 25, 162 yards and two touchdowns. And Los Angeles wins again for Lee Gross Cup. Tim Brandt saying so long.